Thank you so much, TJ. Good morning, Board of Commissioners and to the citizens of Douglas County. Uh, please uh, welcome, I would like to welcome you and also please join us in uh, Douglas County Board of Commissioners Monday, February 15, 2021 work session. Um, I would like to call roll call before we start and I'll start with District 1 Commissioner Henry, Henry Mitchell III. Are you, you here? If you could just acknowledge your presence. Present. District 2 Commissioner and Vice Chairman Kelly Robinson. Present. District 3 Commissioner Terenio Carthen. Present. And District 4 Commissioner uh, Ann Jones uh, Guider will not be with us this morning due to an emergent family uh, matter. And then um, Chairman Ramona Jackson Jones present. So we have a quorum this morning, Board of Commissioners. Uh, before I start this morning, Board of Commissioners, I would like to take the time to welcome, welcome one of our new leaders here in the county and uh, he's our chief appraiser and I'm not sure if he's on the line with us this morning but I would just like to acknowledge his uh, presence and also that he has joined the team here in Douglas County in this administration. Uh, our new chief uh, tax appraiser is uh, Mr. Steve Balfour. Uh, Mr. Balfour on behalf of the Douglas County Board of Commissioners and myself would like to welcome you and uh, we look forward, uh, forward to working with you. Is Mr. Balfour, are you on the line this morning? Well, he's not with us, but I do still want to not acknowledge his presence here in Douglas County and then just also introduce uh, Mr. Balfour to the citizens of Douglas County. With that being said, clerk, I'm going to move on to the next item, which is for public comment. Do we have public comment this morning? Uh, Chairman, we did not have anyone sign in for public comment. Uh, however, I would like to ask if there's any public on the uh, call right now, if they would like to speak. Okay, I guess there's uh, no one here this morning, Chairman, so if you would like to go ahead and move on. Okay, thank you so much, Clerk Watson. Appreciate you. We're going to move on. We have presentations this morning, and I want to start with our cost reduction assessment update. Mr. Dada has notified me that he has a, a meeting and need to uh, go first, and I certainly want to uh, give him the privilege of moving on first this morning. Mr. Dada, are you here, Sam Dada? Yes, uh, good morning, Chairman. I'm here. Mm -hmm. You have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. Thank you, uh, all the commissioners. Uh, good morning to all of you, and I appreciate accommodating me uh, for, uh, in the beginning. Um, I think Don just presented, uh, I think, the presentation there. I think some of you have already seen this and, and um, went to the IT committees approved. Now it's coming to the uh, you know, uh, the, the Board of Commissioners here. On the, this is re related to a cost reduction on wireless telecom and very focused on Sprint, L, uh, Sprint uh, Wireless. So the next slide, please. So um, what we have completed, we have, I believe, September, October, November, we have taken three months of actual Sprint data and see what can be done. You have uh, 318 lines and in a monthly average, some month more or less, is costing you between $32.71 per line um, in an average. Uh, we, uh, what we do in this area is uh, there are technology in place that we put between Sprint and the county and we do the audit and optimize the data usage. And so again, no changes on the carriers, no changes in the service lines. The, our system pings the sprint three to four days before the billing. And we download all those information. We look into your contracts. We look into all the available contracts available for the state and the county through sprint and any promotions they have, and then change those based on your usage. And that way you don't pay anything extra. If there is an overage, we actually change that to a new program. So that way you still optimize your cost structure. So we did all the analysis and we're confident that it will save you around you know, $12 or so on each line after the technology cost. There is a fee for the technology 
I think if they charge directly five to six dollar, it will pass through us. But even with that, uh, we are seeing 38 percent savings. Along with that, the benefit that you will have there is an audit trail of all the lines. Um, there are reports as well as the general ledger coding will be done one time setup. So currently you get the bill, somebody looks into that, send it to accounting, make the general ledger uh, numbers, and then go enter it in the system. It will come in a very summarized level. So hopefully it will also save time of your people just to take that and you will see before the bill was and what the new bill is uh, when the new bill comes in and you will be able to see the savings. Uh, that's the program. Generally, it takes six to eight weeks to implement. Again, um, no changes anywhere. We, we need an IT person's help so that way they can see, uh, you know, where they can see those you know, um, listing of the lines and the bills. So it's pretty much everything online. We'll still provide a monthly report. And so that's the program. Once this is done, our request to the IT uh, committee was, let us review your Verizon bill, which is actually even a lot more than 300 lines. And so we wanted to go a little bit at a time, prove the concept, and then go from there. And that's it. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Dada. Our Board of Commissioners, we have any questions for Mr. Dada regarding the savings? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. 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 Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, Sam, good morning. Uh, good morning. Question for you. Um, so I, I get it. So that's for three months, and so you'll look, you'll keep looking at this for the full year. I realize uh, an annual savings. Is that the goal? Yes. Yes. All right. So that's the goal on that part. And you've got some other lines that you're looking at via Verizon. Um, um, you said cost per line. Uh, that's the technology part. Um, it, and you, you sort of alluded to it regarding process flow and cost per processing of, of you, you, where you're going there. I, I was trying to get a feel where you're going because there's, there's savings with technology and their savings with process. How, mm -hmm. What is the scope of your work and will there be some recommendations regarding that? Sure. So the technology sure. is, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. That's okay. That's okay. So, uh, so can you hear me? You're breaking yes, up yes. just a little bit. Yeah, I'm breaking yeah. up. All right. Um, so um, the so uh, commissioner, the technology is, is um, it's um, a proprietary it's technology, technology that goes between the wireless company and, and billing system. And it looks into automatically all the contracts that you have, which we uploaded ahead of time, and also state contracts, and then compare to the usage and, uh, and adjust it on a month-to-month -month basis. Um, so that's the technology. And without that, it's not possible manually doing that, all the lines, and adjust it after the bill. So we do it before the bill comes in. The process side is, Commissioner, that the, the system will also give visibility. What's the data has been used? So you can really watch if somebody is, uh, if any line is watching a lot of movies or not, it really triggers mm -hmm. all those. And that's a good thing. But also on the uh, accounting side, we look into all the 380 lines, depends on the departments and everything. So the accounting helps us during the implementation. What is the general ledger coding for this line? And we hard code these things. And so when the report comes in, it's a summary level that, OK, here are your bill. It's been audited. Here is the original bill. Here are the savings for the bill. And then here are the general ledger coding and the amount. And then accounting can just review it for a few minutes and process it for payment. No, I appreciate it. It just gives insight. I get the technology does the, the heavy lifting for us, but some of this may be um, people adjustment um, and, and how we, we, we do things here. So I just wanted to know how much it was going to provide us by way of data, but you've answered my question. So I'm good for right now. Um, well done. Keep going. Um, we appreciate you being here. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Chairman. Any other questions from the board? And if not, I'm going to move on. Mr. Dada, thank you so much and have a great day. 
Thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Working, thank you for working on um, our savings here in Douglas County. We definitely sure. want to quick, reduce quick, our costs. Quick question, uh, um, Chairman. Uh, should what's the next step? Uh, is it approved so we can talk to the IT for implementation? Well, this has to go before the full board, and I will uh, let me call you back, and we'll let you know. But it, it needs to go before the full board. This is your okay. presentation today, and okay. then we will certainly make a decision. Fantastic. Let me know. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Dada, and have a great day. Thank All you. right. Our, our next presentation this morning, uh, we have a splashed update from Mr. G uh, Terry Gable. Mr. Gable, are you here? Yes. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. You have the floor. Hold, hold, Madam Chair, just mm -hmm. a yes. real quick point of order before he, he moves. Previous question, so what is it that we were about to do? And not that I was against it, but it, it sounds like he was making a presentation. What's, what is the ask that we need to sign back off? To call him offline without the full board, I'm just, what was that exchange? I just want to make sure I understood what, what just happened. What are we approving? He just wants to know if we would want to, if we want to engage in the savings for, with Sprint. There's an opportunity for savings, cost savings. And of course, that is something before I just give the nod, I wanted it to come before the full board. It could be placed on the agenda. It's a cost saving and, and certainly I want him to go in and quantify that savings for us to give us an idea of what that savings would look like uh, before we pull the trigger. I'm not sure if we have all our uh, constitution office, constitutional officers on board with this uh, request. So he's still massaging some things. That's why I asked him if he could just uh, hold off a little. All right, today. so this was a, uh, like a, pre a preliminary audit, an assessment of here's the potential savings. Yes. Um, give you yes. some, uh, a quick look and then out of that, I mean, sort of like our energy audit savings, same process. We audited on the front side, they came back with the findings and then we rolled it out. So is that what I'm hearing? I'm not leading you, I'm just asking. Yeah, that, yeah. that's what you're hearing, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, I yield the floor, Madam Chair. I just wanted to clarify. I didn't want to misunderstand what he was asking. Thank you, ma'am. I yield. You're welcome. All right. If there's nothing else, we're going to move on to uh, Terry Gable with our SPLOS presentation this morning and the update. You have the floor, Mr. Gable. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. Um, so I'll be reporting on, this is Terry Gable with Atlas, and I'll be reporting on the, um, the December revenues um, this month and the work completed through January. Uh, with that, let me, and before I, I start, David Good does have a vendor, a short vendor report that he'll do at the end of my presentation. Okay. Let me get Thank it. Thank you. Up. Mm -hmm. And please let me know if, uh, if you have trouble seeing it. Okay, so we'll get started. Uh, again, this is the February SPLOST update report. Um, for um, the revenues in December and uh, work completed through uh, January. Um, the uh, we invoiced out about a million dollars uh, in uh, in January, and it's brought our total up to around 57, 55.7 million dollars. Uh, so a good month considering we uh, we're in we're in the middle of the the winter um, and the difficulties you have with particularly all the the rainy weather we've been having lately. Um, most of that money was in transportation and parks. We had very little that was invoiced out in fire. Transportation, just right at $230,000 was invoiced out in transportation. And in parks and recreation, we had a, around $654,000 that was invoiced out. So the program's doing well. Uh, again, things do slow down um, in the winter, uh, but we still had a pretty good month considering, considering that factor. Um, and then looking at the the, uh, the revenues, uh, our December revenues came in strong um, um, at $2.8 million. So that was very good news um, as, as we all been monitoring this very closely with with COVID and how it's affecting our economy. Uh, but the revenues have, uh, as we've been tracking has has stayed strong through year four, which has been um, has been really been what we needed with with our overall program and cash flow. So the you can see the uh, the 2.8 million dollars for for the month of December um, was our highest actually our highest um, recorded revenue month. Um, and if you just look at the past 12 months, other than the the, uh, the month we had in August, which was 
the additional money we had from the uh, the state audit. So good news there um, with our revenue uh, for, forecast for right now. Uh, if you look at the uh, overall program uh, for all four years to date, we're at $98.1 million. And if it was projected out, it's 91.1, um, which brings us just shy of $7 million. That is over projections. So again, the program is, is very stable and solid. Um, and we look forward to, um, as we move into, um, this is the February report. We got one more month in year four, uh, which will be a milestone for us. We'll be moving into year five uh, as of April 1st. Um, and then we'll be in the last two years of the 2016 uh, SPLOS program. Uh, everything right now is, is on track and with the work compared to the, the revenues we've been drawing in and the time, uh, no, no changes have been recommended for the, for the program. Uh, the bond servicing and payment obligation, um, as we have been reporting that smaller payment was made in October, uh, as of April 1st, the larger payment of $16.8 million would be made uh, these funds are in reserve, um, and we have it ready to make that payment, which is good news. Our, our last payment will be in year five, much smaller than what we've been um, we've been reporting. Uh, so it'll be that much quicker we can get to um, uh, pay go money. And again, that'll be that'll finish out the bond payment obligation uh, in year five, which is even better news. Okay, real quick for fire. Um, our ambulance, uh, you know, has been is in uh, went through procurement uh, and it has been ordered. We're expecting the chief and deputy chief are expecting this to be delivered in July. We thought might get it a little bit early, but it will be coming in uh, uh, with a, a proposed date in July as the fire truck. So the new chief will be getting some new equipment coming in uh, almost immediately here, which is good news uh, to get both the ambulance and the fire truck in service. Um, and to serve the, uh, the general public. So good news there with that. Uh, and then the only other project we have currently have ongoing right now with, with the chief is fire station 11. Um, this project is ready as I reported last month, we're ready to bid this project out, um, but we are waiting on, um, on GDOT to provide us or prove for us the access permit in order to utilize their right of way um, to run that short section of a uh, sewer line. Um, it has been a, 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 a challenging little process with GDOT. We have several projects in the SPLOS program that's affecting all the all three departments um, that would need permits, but we're diligently trying to work with them and work through the process. Um, but as soon as we get um, thumbs up from GDOT, we're ready to go and I can have the, we can have the plans and the, uh, the bid documents over to Don to go ahead and get this project out for out for bid and I'll keep the board um, posted on on the progress of that. The only thing I'll mention in fire um, and you will see it on the agenda today. Um, the chief will be going through several items ticket items that um, will be coming out of their um, station renovation funds for year five. Uh, this has already been discussed and, and we've reviewed this. Um, and where those those uh, those items will be coming from for year five, so that'll uh, that'll be a good start uh, for him as he moves into the first year of the pro uh, of his program. Uh, and then moving on to transportation, uh, the resurfacing program. We're still reporting on that for 2020. Uh, still remains one road to complete. That's Dundee Court uh, in the maintenance. Uh, is doing some rework on, on some of the, the drainage for that one road uh, that needs to be done before they, they do the topping on it. Uh, once that's completed, that should finish out everything for 2020. Miguel's reporting that they, they're very close to getting the, uh, the package together and to put out for bid for 2021 resurfacing program. We're looking forward to that, and that should be early, uh, uh, late spring, early summer. Um, to get that on the street and get the contractor started with that work uh, as we move into year five, the resurfacing program. Uh, Stewart Mill Road, as we've been reporting, is um, is in the right-of-way phase. Um, we do have that one parcel. Uh, everything is being cleared except for the parcel with the city. Miguel is, is working with them very closely to try to finalize that. 
Um, and we, we're also working, Miguel's staff is working with the consultant to get the 404 permit. The environmental permit has to be approved with his plans and everything to go as soon as those two things are called. We'll, we'll get this project out for bid and, and, and hopefully have this. This is one of Miguel's projects that'll be under construction this this summer. Uh, Bright Star Road and John West Road, um, as we've been reporting, is is substantially completed, is in a punch list phase. And then there'll be some more work that uh, will be done to find to get that project finished up. But it is open, fully open to traffic, um, as with uh, Sweetwater Church Road. Uh, it is also in the punch list phase phase and we will I'll continue to report on these till we get a little closer getting those uh, completely closed out and then we'll move them into um, into uh, the completed um, phase of the program uh, this is a drone shot that TJ done for us um, to kind of fi uh, follow this project out I have had some shots of it before but this is a good overview our aerial view a view of that intersection uh, is working very well and it turned out to be a nice looking project for the county and for the citizens. Um, and then moving on, Chapel Hill Road is, is right square in the middle of the design phase. Um, we have a milestone that we're going to hit here uh, this month. The, um, uh, the design team is finishing up uh, an updated full concept display that they'll be sending to Miguel for review. Uh, they will, once Miguel provides comment and approval back on that, they will move into the uh, preliminary uh, plan phase and be getting that started. Um, and we'll continue on with the design and looking forward to getting right away plans for this project because it will take a few months uh, to get that, get the parcels, uh, the number of parcels acquired for this project. So we're looking forward to that one continuing to move forward and no issues at this point. Highway 5 is, uh, is uh, as I've been reporting, it is in the, uh, the design phase. We are getting closer to right away phase and um, Miguel and Mar are looking at several parcels that are going to need to be closed and acquired for for this right turn lane that uh, has grown a little bit in size, uh, which is going to affect a few more parcels. So we're, we're looking forward to getting those right away plans from the design team. Uh, so Miguel, Miguel can get his um, uh, staff on on that and, and start working on the right of way. Once that's done, um, we'll be um, Finishing the plans up and getting this getting this project ready for to bid out. Also, Post Road Bridge is continuing uh, under construction with Wright Brothers. I was out there last week. They 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 have gotten it out of the ground. As you can see, uh, they were setting the beams uh, when I was out there last week. Um, this it's always interesting uh, to stop by and take a look at the uh, the progress. Um, these are these beams about 120 feet long and, uh, and they're they're that long to span that creek so uh they're making good progress again everybody's fighting the weather and the rain uh they've got to work on the end vents uh which will be next um and then they'll be starting to pour some of the top top deck on the bridge but they are making progress and we're looking forward to getting that project completed by by summer and getting it open to traffic uh lithia springs sidewalk projects as i reported that you know these are these are substantially complete. Uh, they're just in a punch list phase and Miguel and him were making some last uh, last few changes in um, uh, some of the drainage uh, to improve everything before we close these projects out. But same thing with Chestnut Log. Sidewalks is uh, substantially complete and it's in a punch, punch list phase. And I'll keep reporting on it until they, till Miguel and them close it out. Uh, new Manchester, uh, is still uh, we're still working with GDOT. One of the projects that we we got to get an access permit from GDOT. Um, if you remember this one, this is projects had quite the link lengthy um, items that have come up as we move through this. A lot of this has been generated by the Hawk si signal that we are proposing that we put on State Route 92 to provide more safety uh, for the uh, walking pedestrians out there. Um, the last thing that that GDOT required was a traffic signal warrant study that Miguel and them have, have completed and submitted. 
Uh, they're just waiting on approval for that, which in, in turn should lead to an approval for the access permit. So we're just, again, we're on hold for, or for GDOT. And once we get that final approval back, we are ready to, to put this project out for bid. Um, our white stone cover is, um, we're up on top finally, and I showed a picture last month of the culvert itself. Um, well, they are, it's, they're on, uh, on the road now, and you can see the curb gutters in, the guardrails in. Um, they should be replacing asphalt soon and uh, doing a lot of finishing touch-ups on it uh, and closing out the, uh, any of the flat work of the sidewalk that'll need to be improved on it. Um, but looking forward, again, I know that's been a long time coming. Uh, and getting this road open back up for the public out there in that in that uh, that area and community to be able to get access uh, across that creek. Um, so nearing completion on that should have it completed by late spring, if not earlier than that. So our our street light projects are are moving forward. This is phase one I twenty ramps. Um, Georgia Power had two. They got the I twenty at Post Road. Um, we are still waiting on GDOT there. Uh, I keep hitting up uh, Georgia Power, and obviously they're they're at the mercy of GDOT to get that one ramp. Um, the changes that were required had been submitted and get that approved. The I-20 at Liberty Road, Georgia Power is waiting on fixtures to be delivered, uh, and in order to move forward with that. Uh, on Greystone side, um, they have completed uh, I-20 at Lee Road and I-20 at State Route 5. Uh, as of last week, they were completing Thornton Road and Chapel Hill. So they are nearing completing um, the work on the I-20 uh, ramp. So that was, I thought that was good news. And then looking at phase two for the roads and the intersections, Georgia Power has completed Highway 78 at Post Road and Highway 78 at John West. And that was the only two projects they had with the county that was on the the the, uh, the roads or the intersections, so they they've completed with that, and their primary focus will be work, working on and getting the ramps done and on I twenty at Post Road and John West. Um, Greystone has also made uh, some pretty good progress. They finished up uh, West Stewart Mill Road uh, last week. They were finishing that up with Percy Lake Road, um, and with the exception of State Route one sixty six, the road projects are complete. Um, they're telling me that the 166 is going to take multiple GDOT permits uh, in order before they can they can get a final plan and uh, and move forward with that project. It will probably be towards the end of the overall program. Uh, and that is, if you remember, that's one of the larger lighting projects uh, in the batch that we did for the entire county. So some good progress there. And as uh, I'll continue to to communicate with them and make sure everything is moving and, and report to the board if they if we are seeing any issues. Um, Highway 92 at Riverside Parkway. Uh, this is one that we've been reporting to the board that this is we're in partnership with GDOT uh, on another uh, quick response project that they take the they take the, they took the lead on. Uh, I'm glad to report that they've actually started work on this on this, which was good news. Um, so they'll be out there until that project's completed. The only um, responsibility the county had in this was to provide the mass post, which uh, was great news um, in, in our, our part of the project. Um, we can put the, uh, those monies that we had identified for the project can be put towards other plus projects. So good news there. So they, they're moving forward. I think that worked out. Miguel said it worked out good with the county helping with the polls. It actually was able to accelerate the project and get it uh, get it under construction sooner. Uh, Lee Road, no change there. Miguel's working diligently with GDOT and the feds and trying to get this project rebid. Um, the uh, the board approved to reject the bids for the pre uh, the previous bid, uh, and, and now the challenge is getting it back uh, back out on the street. Um, and hopefully that'll be towards the end of the late spring or early summer. Uh, Miguel will be able to get this project uh, back out on the street and get it bid out. Um, so with that, and we'll just keep the board um, informed in, uh, of, of that and as we move into the, uh, into the spring. Uh, our last project with transportation is Maxim Road sidewalk project. Um, 
the design is is mostly complete on this. Uh, we're still in the in the uh, the right of way phase. Uh, there were about four parcels, just driveway easements, um, and not reporting any any problems with this. It's just a matter of working through the process. Uh, but this will be another project that we'll see under construction this summer um, from Miguel's group, uh, which would be another good sidewalk project to get done uh, for the county. So with uh, with that, that finishes up the our update for transportation and I'll quickly touch on uh, the parks program. Um, the the um, multipurpose uh, activity center is um, they, they've made some progress again. It's been challenges with the weather. Um, the aerial view of the shot there was taken back towards the end of January and that 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 roof is completed now everything is dried in the roof um, their goal is to complete everything uh, on the exterior of the building by the end of the month um, have permanent power on uh, one critical thing and, and it's it's it relates to the finishing the interior of the building is it needs to start start drying out for the floor uh, as you know the the gym floors have that nice pretty hardwood uh, but a critical uh, fact factor in that is getting the building completely dried out. So by the end of the month, they'll have the the uh, the windows will be sealed. They are having some a slow to delivery on the glass. The uh, the frames will be in. If the glass is not there, they'll have it sealed up temporarily with some with plastic. Um, so it should shouldn't affect anything as far as getting the HVAC turned on and, uh, and get this building dried out. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, it's really made a good bit of progress and really starting to take shape and and uh, and, and look good. They are putting the uh, the final metal roof deck on the building, um, but that's not really impacting it being dried in. Uh, the building is 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 well dried in with the uh, the ice and water shield that was put on as an underlayment uh, for the building. But you'll start seeing the the final roof color go on uh i was going i went by there this morning you can not you can see some of those pieces start to go in so we're looking forward to that and getting it uh, dried in and getting starting to see some of the, the pretty interior of the building uh come online and that's uh, uh that's what will be the next big phase of the project the senior center um the the main thing with that we're i've been reporting on is the screen in porch and it has been just the delivery of that has been delayed with everything going on with the with the, anything uh, as far as materials. Um, it's but right now finally got a date from the contractor. They're expecting delivery February 22nd and it'll take a couple of weeks, two, three weeks to get it uh, installed and completed uh, with that. We'll be working with the contractor uh, with a couple punch list items, uh, but not interfering with the building itself. Um, and it's already again, it's been turned over to the county, but we, we've still got him under uh, under our warranty phase and we'll be working with him to get everything. That's uh, some things I'm sure will be found as we as we uh, move through the year and we'll get those taken care of with Headley. So good news there. And then um, finally, the uh, the last two I've been reporting on is, is Bill Lark and Fair Play Concession Building. Um, the, the the health department I'm waiting I thought we were going to get this last week it was their uh, design requirements on this on the tank system and the permit um, as soon as we get that uh, we'll get it into the hands of the contractor and he can once he reviews that he can tell us on what it's going to take to get these tanks in um, as you can see the buildings are really going to be nice I think they're going to be it's going to be a big asset for these two parks um, and this is fair play along with the new lights that we put in. Um, the only thing remaining, uh, but we've got to get the tanks in is for uh, the contractor can get water on the building. He can start doing some final cleanup and some finishing touches on all the, the, uh, the trim work and everything in the building and clean everything up. But uh, they're really looking nice. And I think, again, it's going to be um, a nice asset. It just it has, it has been a, a, a process with these tanks. Uh, but they're, they're, they'll be there and they'll be well, uh, well sized and, and large enough for, uh, for the, for the uh, parks for years to come. So, um, and then with that, uh, David, are you online with us? Uh, yes, I am. 
I will um, I'll turn it over to David and let him go quickly go through the vendor report, uh, Madam Chair, and then we'll open it up for uh, questions from the board. David, do you Thank want to go so ahead? Just let me know. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, yes, to go, again, this is uh, David Goods, Boss Communications Director. As you see on the screen, uh, we have 128 total vendors. Um, 45 of them are right here in Douglas County. Another 42, we also consider local, but they're within 30 miles of Douglas County. The other 41 are either outside of the 30 miles or outside the state of Georgia. And they're working on 82 total projects. Uh, 39 of them are active, 43 are complete. When we say active, um, that's all the way until everything has actually been paid off. So we might be in use of that project, but if it has not been, um, if all the checks have not been done, we do not consider those, um, we consider them active until they're com totally completed. On the next um, screen, we actually have, of those quote unquote uh, local vendors, um, that's almost 70% of all the vendors. And so we make sure that we reach out to them through every communication effort. Um, last month we did doing business through Douglas County and we made sure that we let people know about the SPLOS program. Um, next slide. And then the next one that comes up is that you actually see the amount of um, dollars that have been spent with our local vendors. Um, that's 29 million throughout um, both sides of the local vendors. And so that represents about 55% of the um, SPLOS funds. So 70% of the use and 55% of those um, of those dollar funds. Uh, we've completed, we're getting ready to go into, uh, like Terry Gable said, going, we're ending year four, we're getting ready to go into year five. And so we make sure that even though we're in this COVID uh, uh, type of setup, we actually reach out to all of our vendors through um, any type of virtual events that's going on for anyone who's doing anything in Douglas County, we reach out through are um, do, do virtually. So we make sure we're a part of it. And then the next slide is all about our DBEs. Um, as earlier as I kind of presented, we did have a doing business through Douglas County and we had a couple of DBEs that were there and some actually uh, got their certification as I understand. And right now through all of our projects, 75% um, of those projects have um, DBE representation or, or minority owned representation. And with that, um, that's my presentation. And well, uh, both Terry Gabriel and I will take any questions you have. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Good. And also thank you so much, Mr. Gable. Board of Commissioners, do we have any questions for our SPLOS uh, team this morning? Sure. Yes, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, um, on behalf of District 2, I'd like to ask Terry Gable a couple of questions. So, Terry, you out there? I am. Yes, sir. All right. So um, I'll, I'll start. I'll start with transportation. Um, and Miguel, don't worry. You don't have to respond to this. We'll, we'll catch up tomorrow in the transportation committee meeting. But but specifically, Terry, looks like um, uh, Riverside and um, 92. Uh, the light is coming along. And, yes, and, and, mm -hmm. and just to back up for a minute, and again, this is what we're going to our fifth year for this for the SPLOST and uh, to think about, you know, from the time that we laid down the, the, the bike lanes on, on Riverside, then we added street lights and then we we also dealt with um, um, speed and, and now we've got this light at the end. I mean, you, you see it shaping up. Yes, I, mean, sir. I know sometimes the citizens, I mean, you got to step back for a minute. Look how this thing is being shaped. You, you think about obviously the light at, at Mount Vernon. You, you think about the things that we've done on Maxim and, and, and the construction and obviously the signs that goes toward the airport. I mean, it was shaped, right? And all this was with SPLOS dollars. So I appreciate the, the $2.8 million that you've acknowledged where half of that is transportation because it, it's making a difference. To hear the the, the, the sidewalks coming in, it, 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 I mean, these are things that the citizens have asked for, but to see it manifest, I mean, we're, I'm sure we're four years, going to five years in. We see the difference, um, and and this 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 mechanism that the General Assembly gives us um, to use SPLOS as as a function for funding, not property tax, but for funding uh, major um, items is, is so critical. So I, I had to at least acknowledge that because it, we couldn't have done this, Madam Chair, without that SPLOS. And so I appreciate these these projects that are coming online because the citizens actually get to see them and I get comments constantly like they, they get to see the manifestation. So I want to at least acknowledge that and I appreciate you guys um, 
overseeing this for us because there's no way that um, our, our staff could have you know delivered services and then oversee something as, as big as this. So thank you to, to Atlas and, and those guys and the team with H.J. Russell and David, all you guys for what you do. All right, two quick questions. Boundary Waters um, uh, Community Center, which obviously is something very important. Uh, on Boundary Waters, I heard you say we're about to seal it up. So when is the anticipated go live? Um, the contractor in our last meeting, uh, his goal is to have it sealed up by the end of February. And he's, he's commissioner. He's basically there now. Uh, but the the key there is to get get permanent power on it and get the building uh, start getting air flowing in the building. Uh, he's got to do that. It's before he moves forward with anything. So it's a it's a it's a, a lot there at stake. And uh, I'm gonna have to. Uh, but that was a goal, and I, I see no reason. Uh, why he shouldn't be able to meet that by the end of February. Right. End of February seal, but okay, so then um, once you're inside, as as they say, and I, I know Commissioner Mitchell would, would correct me if I miss, miss this. So once I'm inside, then how long does it take to sort of build out the interior and get it to a point where it's um, 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 goal ready, you know, ball ready? When do you go um, live? And I know it's all relative. You know, I'm not never going to box you per se or hold you to a pin. But I, I'm, I'm trying to set expectations. I got a town hall coming up, so uh, the the contractor is his schedule right now is showing completion uh, in May of the building. Completion in May. Mm -hmm. And that would be um, we would still be in a punch list phase, but th it would be substantially complete by May. Yes. Completion by May, and I, I know perhaps um, Director Gary Dukes is out there. I, I'm, I'm trying to anticipate along with the delivery of this capital project. There's also personnel that goes along with that. So I, I'll save that for another day. Um, I'm sure the Committee of Parks and Rec is, is on top of that. But uh, you know, I'm trying to synchronize this right because we yes, have sir. funding mm -hmm. decisions that we have to make. That's just not only this floss, but also our fund balance and everything else. So you know, it has to be aligned. So. I'm good on that. I just want, I'm making a point, and I think the power should be to hear me. All right. That being said, uh, I'm, I'm fine with that. You, you guys move along. Last question, so I can yield the floor. Third one is dealing with, all right, what is what is fire station number 11? Um, that project involved, the, 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 uh, the main focus of the project was to enlarge that, that um, the back parking lot so that the fire trucks could do a three-point turn uh, and come in from the rear. Uh, GDOT is in favor of it. I think they 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 liked the project from the beginning. We just hit a, uh, a stalemate here with their utility department. Um, but that was it. Um, it uh, the septic tank system had to be addressed. I think it was nearing its life. Um, so that came into play uh, in the, the scope of the project. And then once we got that a preliminary design for that, we realized we couldn't. There's just not enough room on that parcel to do a full blown uh, septic tank system and and put the the the, uh, the three point turnaround parking lot in. So that's the goal. Uh, we just got to get this worked out with this sewer system uh, and we'll be able to move forward with it. All right, I, I, it, I thought something else, you've answered my question, but where, I guess where I'm going with this since we're coming to the end of this, what do we stand with the fire station for Thornton Road? Um, I know it's on the list. Um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm sure I can go pick up a report, but I, I want to hear it publicly. Um, this is something that was expressed along with the senior center as well as the community center as bar being the verticals that go mm -hmm. up. Um, obviously, you know, four and a half, five billion dollars on Thornton Road. There's a lot of commercial tax dollars um, that obviously is being paid into that area. Um, there is some exposure. I get mutual aid from Austell. I, I get Riverside. But I mean, these guys actually, I mean, they, they had an expectation. So do we think we're going to get there with this floss? And I'm looking at the spin here, um, but you know, I, I'm, I'm making sure that there's acknowledgement that says, okay, now that was on the list. I understand it's a cost, but can you speak to that? Will, will it make it or what? Where are we at? Yes, sir. We've, uh, it's, in, it's in the budget and uh, we've got it set up. Uh, that'll be something I'll be meeting with a new chief on. We I plan to start the design this year in year five um, for the building. And we That's will, fine. I, I, you're fine. I, I hadn't met the chief yet. We, we plan to meet. I'm just setting his expectations on what I plan on talking about. So you're you're good. Okay. Uh, 
You're good, Terry. We're, we, that's me messaging. So, no, we're good. Madam Chair, all my questions have been asked. I've only had, you know, I, I fulfilled my three. I give back the floor. Thank you, ma'am. Perfect. Thank you so much. Any other questions from the board or comments? Yes. Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. I'm going to move on and thank you. Okay, Commissioner Mitchell. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just, just a couple. Uh, just a great job, I guess, for those who are actually taking part in this um, splash run. And, and, and Terry, I guess the, the, the people are still showing up, even with the mere fact of this pandemic giving us a run for our money. But uh, it looks like the splash penny is doing well, correct? Yes, sir. Um, to, uh, to date, we are uh, very pleasantly surprised, but uh, very, very stable, and very solid. Correct. And, and financially, we are good with all the debt from the mere fact of, I know we get into the pay as you go, but the, the, the pay off our end of the splash dollars. So are we good on that end? We are. Um, you know, we've got the this last large payment uh, um, in year four is, is in reserve now. We'll make that in April. And then the, the last payment um, is around $4.2 million. So it, we're, we're, it's very small compared to the the other payments that we've made. So yes, we're, we're good. And hopefully finish that up the first half of year five. Right. So it doesn't look like any problems just based on the mere fact of how this thing is moving, correct? No, sir. Not at this point. Uh -uh. Okay. And a couple other questions. Now, during our Parks and Rec uh, committee meeting, and uh, you didn't make it, Terry, but I know, David, I don't know if you want to speak to this. We talked about a roof that we're looking at, trying to make sure that we possibly fit this roof in, even though we got a cost savings that we spoke of at the committee level in reference to some reorganizational structure. Um, David, can you kind of speak to that so the general public can know that we're definitely on top of this roof problem at the parks and that we're definitely trying to find where it falls in the, in the stack, in the deck, when it comes to any dollars and cents going in that direction of the spot. Well, right. Uh, right now, I do know that the at the bottom of this uh, were the two um, concession stands, Fair Play and uh, Bill Arp, and then right under that was, um, was uh, Deer Lake Renovations. And right. I do know that Terry did look at, you know, where the finances are, and he can speak more to that on how much is uh, available for the roof. But the Deer Lake uh, Renovation you know, is next right under um, the two concession stands. And I know that we did talk over with Gary and that Gary was gonna get with, um, I guess with, with, the you know, with the local uh, departments and find out exactly how much it would cost to get to right. the roof. So Gary might be able to speak more to that part on who he talked to and then Terry can speak more to um, how much on the financing that we have. Terry? Yeah, yeah, Commissioner, we should be good. Um, I'll what I have, and I've had it in the uh, in the budget, was a hundred thousand dollars to go towards that roof. Right. I'm, I'm, from what I'm hearing now, it's it's going to be more money. And yes. again, I'll let Gary speak to that. But we we have a hundred dollars that we're uh, that I've designated to go towards the roof. Hundred thousand dollars. Okay, right, not not a hundred dollars because we we need more yeah. than hundred dollars. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But okay, yeah, I, I mean, we, we won't get into the nuts and bolts of it, though, but I just want to make sure that the general public know that we're actually looking at that roof and that situation and trying to address it, uh, even in the splash, that we're we're doing our due diligence and trying to adjust dollars and cents and trying to make sure that we're going in the right direction when it comes to that, though. But the good part is, yes, sir. it is in the, it, it, it probably will make it uh, on the splash list, even though we've only got $100,000, because that's what we estimate it to be, you know, years ago. However... I think that cost has kind of changed, you know, almost another hundred thousand dollars or close to it to really get it done right, to do it right. But we'll look at that and we'll get to that cost. The other question I've got. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah, Gary. I didn't, I didn't Gary. Know. Okay. Sure. Go ahead, Gary. I, I just wanted to give you an update or give okay. the commissioner an update. I met with James Worthington, and James has a company that uh, some way through the state, and they go around and give estimates on roofs for uh, counties, cities, whatever. And he is in the process now of getting an update on what that roof will cost and hopefully we'll have something shortly. Yeah, okay, okay. I didn't even know you was on it. Thank you for speaking up though, Gary, I appreciate it. Sure. Okay, okay. And, and let's move right along also to the uh, Senior Citizen Center. Also at the committee level, we had a conversation about um, uh, the warranty. Uh, I'm not sure exactly is there a need for what I call an extended warranty? 
because the COVID situation has caused us and, and put us in a position to where we won't use that building to the mid to latter part of this year. So we run out of our, our warranty or is these guys understanding that the warranty will stay in effect another year, another five years? You know, I was, I was being kind of crazy saying I would hope that it extends to five years. But at the end of the day, I'm more concerned with somebody and these guys all understand that we may be in a unique situation where we haven't used the building outside of, you know, the the, um, the health department used it to give out shots and a couple of things that have been dealing with this COVID situation. But the use of the building may not truly get a true full use for another six months or better. Have we had conversation with these guys about that situation? Now, we had this at the committee, and Terry, you wasn't there, though, so I'm not sure if you were in the loop on that. Um, David has kept me a little bit informed of it, and um, the warranty, the, the contractor's obligation will run out in September. Um, so That's you're right. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's a valid point. I have not approached the contractor, James, and I can do that. Um, but in, in our only conversations about it, and I'm sure the contractor, if, if there's a warranty extension, the county will, you know, and it may be worth paying some some funding funds to to extend the warranty on it. Uh, but the contractor is not, you know, won't, it won't be included in in the um, his obligations for the construction of the building. And he's got that first year um that he's responsible for well i hope he actually extended through just his craftsmanship based on the mere fact of nobody's being able to use the building based on this whole pandemic situation however if, if there is a cost i think we need to have that conversation now and the committee we've actually you know been having that conversation and trying to figure out kind of what that looks like if yeah. there is but i would hope that this contractor and doing good business with Douglas County, that he or she would take a hard look at this and understand the situations are different. Uh, if we had been able to use the building once the keys were transferred to us and the singular was in there, you know, marking up the walls and finding the nail pops and everything else, we'd be okay. But we haven't had access to that. I know I've pushed the envelope with um, uh, the director uh, to actually go over there and and, and use stuff, turn the lights on and off, Mr. Yeah. Dr. Gilchrist, to kind of do those kind of things. But it's not going to be enough for me to really get our true due diligence when it comes to the warranty of a year or two years. So hopefully you guys will have a, a good conversation with this, this uh, yes, company sir. and get them to understand we're not mm -hmm. just asking for this because we just want a warranty or an extended warranty. We just want them to do their due diligence and, and, and stating the mere fact of, we understand the situation. So we're going to just automatically give that. We're going to offer that to you guys, you know, to give you guys a full, if it's a year or two years or whatever that is. Now, if there's a cost in dealing with this, you know, we'll address that. But right. I hope that's not, I hope that it doesn't become a cost just because. Yes, I, just hope, I, hope, I hope these guys are smart about this, you know, and want to do, do good business with Douglas County. So. I fully understand that. I'll, I'll communicate with the contractor and get your response back. Okay, and, and, and we can bring that back, and, and definitely I know the committee had asked this question at our last committee meeting from Parks and Rec, so if you can bring that back and definitely give us a heads up of what that looks like, and then we'll bring it back to the full board of what that really is. So uh, if you and David can kind of give me that much, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely really, really, really uh, appreciate that. Now, if by chance it turns out to be September is the magical date, then we'll do all we can to, uh, you know, fulfill that date and get Dr. Gilcrest to, to do all she can to go in there and, and, and find those hopefully issues that we may, you know, encounter that we won't know until we fully use the building. Right. Okay. okay. David, we'll anything else you want to add to this? We'll make sure that. Terry said we'll give it the contract and then have a response back to you, hopefully in time for the uh, next, um, the next community meeting. Okay, I appreciate it. Okay, I yield back. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner. Um, any other comments?
supported. If not, I'm going to move on. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Gable and Mr. Good, for your presentation and, and, your, and your amazing body of work. I will uh, get with you offline, uh, Mr. Gable, just mm -hmm. to uh, mention those lights, the, the lights that are going up on the I-20. I did have an opportunity to ride the county this weekend, and I'm noticing if they could, if they could intensify the lighting a little bit or either use oh. the highest wattage they have. It's a little dim still trying to get on and off, and I know that's the purpose to allow our citizens to yeah. have uh, lighting as they uh, enter the uh, uh, ramps. So if they, just, if they could just, Greystone could just intensify the lighting for me. Yeah, and let me, let me give a, I'll, I'll get you some, I'll get you a feed, some feedback on that and get back with you, okay? Okay, thank you. All right, Board of Commissioners, and thank you so much, Mr. Gable and Mr. Good again. Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on. And we're going to move on to um, the approval of the minutes tomorrow. Board of Commissioners, please uh, uh, review your minutes and we will uh, approve accordingly. And then if you also, we will be approving our expenses tomorrow. So please review your expenses and then we will approve accordingly. And then Board of Commissioners, we do have a proclamation tomorrow and that's tab number four, is proclaiming the month of February as Black History Month in Douglas County. And that'll be uh, read by Jordan Griffin. Uh, she is part of the Douglas County Youth Commission. So we're excited about that tomorrow. Uh, I'm gonna move on to uh, tab number five, which is our first business item, and is authorization to approve the 2021 Equitable Sharing Agreement and certification for the District Attorney's Office and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents Ms. Thompson, how are you doing this morning? I'm good. How are y'all? Very good. You have good. the floor. Okay. This is our annual report for the Federal Asset Forfeiture Fund, um, and it is to um, ask the chairman to authorize and sign all related documents, and also to let you know that um, this office attests that the facts presented in the equitable sharing agreement are true to the best of our knowledge and belief. Okay. Any questions from the board? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Yes, Ms. Thompson, quite good, good morning. Good morning. Uh, j just for the record, I mean, it, sure. it's annual, but can, can you explain what the drug forfeiture, what, what this equitable relationship is? Just a little primer. You don't have to go long, long technically. Sir, can you please? I sure will. Um, we have state and local um, forfeitures, but this is a multi-agency forfeiture. Um, this is more of a on a federal level, and when our law enforcement and us um, all partner together, um, the federal will, if they've seized any money or funds or anything, they will share a portion of it with us, um, and we do accept it if they send it to us, and this is, we report it every year what funds we have received. I got it. So I, I know we've got the, the sheriff has a, a drug forfeiture and you have one as it, uh, meaning representing the district attorney's office. So th those two areas, they split up, they split up the pie. I get it. I understand. Right. Um, and it's uses um, because I, I do, I know from, from obviously being here long enough that there is distinguishing a difference between what the DA can use it for and what the sheriff can use it for. Can you speak to a little bit to what the uses of those funds could be for? Well, actually, the federal asset funds are a totally different guideline than like the local funds. Mm -hmm. And we actually have guidelines of permissible and impermissible uses for the federal. And we have to follow that guideline in order to um, use it. And that's one reason we report annually every year is so they can see what we have spent and if it's <laughs> qualified in the permissible uses. Okay. Is that is disclosable? Uh, a couple of examples and, and what the current balance is, or that that's sort of like secret squirrel type stuff you can't really I, say. I did, I did attach it. I don't. Can you? Um, oh, I can tell you. Um, we did our balance right now is ninety nine thousand two eighty two thirty two. Um, we did buy a vehicle last year with it for thirty three thousand. All right, so we, but you can buy operational improvements, things of that nature. Okay. Correct. Yes. Oh, I, I got it. I just, but sometimes I ask my question just for education for the broader That's public. Fine. But, yeah, thank you for that. Madam Chair, I'm going to go ahead and yield the floor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Ms. Thompson. Okay, we're going to move on to the next item, which is tab number six authorization to amend an employee contract agreement for Jordan Howard victim advocate due to a name change and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Ms. Thompson, again, you have the floor. Okay. 
um, we are classifying some of our positions in the office. And this particular one, um, all we're doing is just changing a position with two people. And um, the other contract had a different name and it, all it is is a name swap and there is no impact to the budget at all. Okay, any questions from the board? I do, okay. Chairman Jones. Uh, uh -huh. There you go, Ms. Um, Commissioner Carthen. Thank Sorry, you, no thank you, Ms. Thompson, for joining uh -huh. us this morning. Thank you. I, I, just, I just have a couple of questions, and sure. I, I, I got what you just said. It's just a name update. Um, just before the, the general public's information, can you tell me if, the grant, if there is a grant that you are using for this position? Is this a grant-funded position? It is a grant-funded position, yes. It okay. is the VOCA grant, and um, the contract is linked to that grant. Okay. My other question for you is, do you remember how much the grant was for this position? Um, it, is a, it is a VOCA grant, and actually on that VOCA grant, I have four employees attached to it. Okay. With the VOCA grants, do they cover um, vacation days and sick leave and those things? Yes. Okay. They use a reimbursement grant, so mm -hmm. they it is only salaries. And I think we, we actually this year put in a little training because we asked for training funds, um, but it is mostly their salaries, benefits, and training. And training. Mm -hmm. Good. So it's not a drain on the general budget for Douglas County. It is a grant that your office utilizes to make sure that you can bring the services to the people of Douglas County. That is correct. Okay. I like yeah, to apply I'm the D. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I'm not sure that it covers 100% um, okay. of all the salaries, but it does cover a large portion. It is. Um, I would have to look and see, but I think it's like 359,000. Okay, and the rest, the DA, she just, I'm assuming, puts into her budget to cover what it does not cover. That is correct. And we also um, usually have a match, but this year we do not. Um, but when we do have a match, we try to get volunteers and we can use that to um, help with the match. Okay. Uh, I'll yield there, but I, I would like to to know if you can, and you can get this to me offline, sure. if the DA's office had any other needs this year. I know we had to, um, you know, cut some some funds, you know, from, from all of the departments. So yes. it's just my thought to see what was it that was cut from your budget um, just as we decide to close out our books, just to make sure, because your office is really important, right? It deals directly with the public and, and, right. and advocacy. Right, right. It, yes. It's really yes. important. So I just want to make sure before we go outside to outside entities that we take okay. care of home. So if you can okay. just get that to me, you can email it to me at your convenience. I certainly will. Thank you very much. Thank you. I yield, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. And thank you so much, uh, Ms. Thompson, as thank well. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. We're going to meet you, too. Oh, whoa, whoa. Don't leave yet. Don't leave. I'm sorry, okay. Commissioner Mitchell. Right, right, right. Hold up. Okay, thank okay. you. D just a couple of questions. So you, sure. you, mentioned, you mentioned that um, that the, the grant, the VOCA grant, covers four employees, and it includes benefits yes. or, or a portion of the benefits, or how much of this on the county the, on the county side that we cover what what is that roughly i mean not no exact and i won't hold you to the number but roughly what is it on the match side of that we deal with because i mean i'm glad that we got the grant i'm glad that we get get roughly three four hundred thousand dollars and in this whole makeup so how yeah. much of that two percent five percent twenty percent that you think of that we're covering on our end that does affect your budget um I cannot answer that, Commissioner uh, okay. Mitchell, until I look at it and can tell you exactly. Um, yeah. And the reason that it it had, and when we first started out, um, to my knowledge, because I assumed it once I took this position, um, it was covering everything. But as the years have gone and raises and yeah. everything else, right. you know, it, it does not. Um, and but I but it does cover a large portion. Um, right. And I, I would have, I don't want to misstate my facts, so I would have to get that information to you. That's okay. That, that'll be fine. And also, okay. when getting that information, if you would please, how much longer is this grant 
um, that you have this MOPA grant? Is it another five years, two years, half a year? What are we looking at in time? Um, we have had this grant. I've been here 12 years and, and I assumed it when I took this position. So that we've had it a long time. Yeah. Um, it is on a three year um, competitive grant okay. and we renew it every year. I mean, we renew it every year, but then it's competitive every third year. Got it. Got you. So um, I, I, I do not know. It would depend, I guess, on the state budget. Right. Um, how right. they would, you know, um, allocate the funds. Understood. Um, but we've, we've had it a while. I've never cool. seen a, a, any change in it. So. so with the competitive piece that you mentioned every three years, Yes, Where sir. are we in that stage of this game? Are we two years in, one year in, or this is the beginning of another three-year period? This is the beginning of another three-year period. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. And and last but not least, if you would, sure. just kinda, I'm just curious to know kind of what is the match, how much is the match, or how much are we contributing to the four employees from our call for, uh, and not that, I mean, it does matter for for the general public so they'll know what that is uh, but it's definitely as Commissioner Carson talked about our our tough uh, budgets that we're dealing with at this moment uh, would be something ideal to just know what we're dealing okay. with and, and making that adjustment so if you would find that out for us and just so we'll we'll know from a board perspective kind of what we're dealing with when it comes to this particular vocal grant um, okay. but, and and my other question this is something that you guys have been doing sound like for 12 years. So this is something you automatically do. There's no there's no input from our grant writers here or anything of that caliber, correct? No, sir. Um, like I said, you know, they were doing it way before. Um, I think I've seen paperwork like 1990 something okay. um, as far back as it goes. Um, and what we do now is we did the competitive grant. Um, prosecuting attorney counsel is actually our agency on this and um, they do it through the um, CJCC um, and so they write do all the uh, um, underwriting for us on this grant and we just um, do the reporting which yeah. is really nice um, so is there, is there a cost for the underwriting of this there is not Okay, okay. I'm just, you know, I'm curious because normally there, there's a fee associated with somebody sure. kind of assisting yeah. you with doing this. So, um, just Pat curious. Pat handles all of Georgia with this, this was particular. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Okay, well, Ms. Thompson, thank you again. I think that's okay. all I think I have here of my notes and I'll yield back and thank you again, Madam Chair. You're welcome. Okay, thank you so, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell, and thank you so much. Ms. Thompson, I believe, do we have any other questions before I move on to tab number seven board? All right, I'm gonna move on to tab number Thank seven, you. authorization to approve 2021 equitable sharing agreement and certification for the Douglas County Sheriff's Office and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Major Holmes, are you on? Major Holmes? I am, I am, okay. I was just getting turned on. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes, right. we can. Um, this is our version of the uh, equitable sharing agreement with the feds it's for the federal accounts. I'm going to try to answer a couple of questions um, now before. So just to give an idea, these, this is, uh, we have that I know of three different uh, of our employees involved in a task force. Uh, we have somebody involved in the Homeland Security Task Force, somebody involved with U.S. Marshal Task Force, and we have a couple of members involved in the U.S. Secret Service uh, Task Force. So as a result of that, uh, and the forfeitures that we received for this year, um, for, 20, for 2020, we wound up uh, starting at $453,604. Uh, we brought in 38,972, uh, spent out 41,987, which basically leaves us a ending sharing funds balance of 45640. That's in the justice funds and then the treasury funds, uh, 117,161. We started with 18,303. We uh, brought in uh, our balance 135,464. Um, 
This is required every year by the U.S. Department of Justice. Uh, it's used to make sure that uh, we're following their guidelines uh, and the funds. And as I spoke last meeting, as well as now, it's these are funds that can't be used to supplement the budget. They can only be used as additions uh, for law enforcement purposes. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Major Holmes. Any questions from the Board of Commissioners? Yes, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Carson. Thank you. Good morning, um, Mr. Holmes. Um, my question to you is in regards to uh, have any of those funds been used in the community um, with community programs, um, safety, any anything like that? Have those any of those funds been used in the community with the citizens? I wouldn't have any idea. I don't. I don't know. Who who would know if if you don't know? Do you know? Yes, you can ask the sheriff. Um, I, I don't know what is expended out of that account. I don't handle that account. Uh -huh. so it's used for law enforcement funds. So uh, I would believe uh, if there's anything there, it would be a very minor amount. But okay. I'm not sure. I don't want to speculate on that. Got you. Okay. So you all just hold the funds and, and just report what you get in and that that's it. No, ma'am. We, we used the funds, like I said a little while ago, we expended 38972 out of the justice funds. What did you expend it on? What did you expend it on? I don't. That's what I'm trying to explain. Uh, okay. I, don't ha I have the report in front of me. I don't have a detailed description of what we spent that money on. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll get it. Answer your question. Uh-huh. Well, I, I'll, I, I, I would just say, you know, if, if you do this in the future, and this is not just you, I'm not picking on you, just when you when you guys come before, just for the public's sake, right? I can get the information. I can get it from, from Director Holloman, but we just like to at least allow for the citizens of Douglas County to know because everything is, is dollars and cents, right? So this is just from me to you and anybody else who is on here. When you come before the Board of Commissioners, we would like for you to kind of have that that available for us so um but i can find out from from director holloman how exactly those funds were were expended um it's good that you're coming before us and, and presenting it but we as the board of commissioners are now having to give madam chair you know permission to to sign the equitable sharing agreement um stating that we know what you guys are spending it on and that everything is accounted for and i know that our ceo cfo Jennifer Holloman is immaculate when it comes to, to audits and finances, but we just like to at least let the public know. That's all. But thank you. You yield back, Commissioner? Are you yielding? Okay. All right. Any other questions for um, Major Holmes? If not, thank you so much, Major, and uh, have you. a great day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. We're going to move on to tab number eight. Authorization to enter a memorandum of understanding with the Heritage, uh, Heritage Book Committee of the Douglas County Gene Genealogy Society and the West Georgia Regional Library System for the donation up to 100 book books titled to uh, the Dog River um, Public Library and House for use uh, only for 10 years. Uh, Director Moore, Lindy Moore, you're on the line. Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Um, yeah, this you have is. Thank you. This is an MOU for um, the Genealogy Society. The Heritage Book Committee has decided to donate um, books to establish a special collections genealogy collection at Dog River, similar to what we have here at the Selman Drive location. Um, this is so we can understand how the books are to be donated and how they're to be used. Um, essentially, we will house them in our collection for 10 years after that point, um, we will decide using our collection development um, policies whether they sh will remain in the collection or if they'll be weeded out. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Director Moore. Any questions for Director Moore, Board of Commissioners? Yes. Okay, uh, um, Commissioner Robinson, you have the floor. Yeah, so, what, um, thank you, Madam Chair. So, 
maybe two, maybe three questions. So what does genealogy mean with me? I, I get it, um, but, but what, what does that mean? What, what are you bringing to the community that they need to be aware of that they could have access to this special collection this morning? Okay, I'm going to um, defer to our branch manager um, of the Dog River Library. She's been working with them, and um, she knows better more of what um, books they plan to donate. Madam Katie? Chair? Yes. Um, it, the branch manager, is she on? Um, Ms. Moore? Ms. Yes. Moore. Katie, are you here? Okay. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Katie, you okay. have the floor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, the Genealogy Society is planning to donate books. These particular books are going to be both for local and even national, possibly worldwide um, genealogy, which is basically the study of families, family trees, that sort of thing. Um, so this will give our patrons, both here in our county and our region, um, a new source to and, and additional sources for our, even our whole state to be able to access information that could possibly bring them um, closer to finding information about their heritage, um, both near and far. No, I, I, the reason I asked that, I just recently did the Ancestry.com and I got the little email notices, what well, is coming, it's coming. So uh, this is new to me, so it, it is of true interest. I'm sure there's others out there, but it's nothing like an old fashioned book. While I appreciate the internet and all that it brings and doesn't bring to, 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 to society, I appreciate the old fashioned book and being able to pull it um, and, and look into that. So this is a special collection, which means what? I would have access to it just to be able to go through it um just i have to look at it there i can't take it home how, how does that work when it means i'm gonna give you a free psa what is the special collection okay so basically what's going to happen is once the books are donated we will send them to our regional library system to be cataloged in the pine system and once they're cataloged in the pine system they're going to be cataloged as what we consider reference materials and those reference materials are able to be seen in the catalog so that the statewide system does have access to see those items, um, but they will stay in-house here at the Dog River Library. And so citizens can come into the library. They do not require um, a library card in order to utilize the information. We record on our end in the catalog that they have used it that way in 10 years once we have um, reached the end of this um, time period that we're setting aside for the MOU um, we'll be able to access information that allow us to know which books have been utilized um, more frequently if things need to be reconsidered as to whether they fit for our catalog and our collection and that sort of thing. I gotcha. Okay. All right. Very good. Can I make copies of stuff that I may find? Like, am I allowed to make copies or is you, you only can read it and take notes? Correct. Um, they are still subject to the copyright laws. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it all depends on the actual item, but just as a general statement, they do, we do not allow them to take straight copies from the book. I understood. I, I just wanted to make a, a point. Um, I'm good. Thank you for, for responding. Thank you, Ms. Moore, for bringing her forth. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Any other questions for, before I move on? Thank you so much, Linda Moore. And thank you so much, um, Ms. Gordon, Katie Gordon, this morning. Uh, certainly um, expanding our genealogy opportunities here in Douglas County and also for the state of Georgia. It sounds like anyone can uh, utilize the, the, this, these books, so thank you. We're going to move on to tab number nine. Tab number nine is authorization to renew an agreement with the Credit Bureau Systems Incorporation, uh, DBA Ambulance Medical Billing, AMB, for emergency medical service billing and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. We have Chief Jolie Vett here this morning. Chief, are you on the line? Yes, ma'am. I'm here, Madam Chair. Okay. You have the first one. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
I'd like to thank you, Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners, and citizens of Douglas County. On behalf of the women and men of Douglas County Fire Department, we would like to thank you for allowing us to serve you. Uh, Madam Chair, respectfully request to have item 13 removed and sent back to the Fire and Safety Committee for further discussion and review. Okay. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> Madam Chair, for, for this presentation, uh, I would like to ask permission to have Courtney Eubanks, our records clerk, uh, Dana Evans, Amos Medical Billing Representative, and Michelle Mahaney, Administrative Assistant, uh, assist me in this process. Uh, okay. we, we will address process, oversight, enforcement, and accountability, and then also benefits. Uh, Ms. Courtney Eubanks, are you, are you on? Yes, sir, I am. Okay, can you answer for me, uh, what is the uh, Depart what is our department process for dealing with medical billing? Okay, these are our runs for what they bill for any time an ambulance comes to your home and transports you to the hospital, you will receive a bill for that. And this company will code the bill and look up your insurance and all that stuff and process the bill for you and for us. Okay, so once it gets to the uh, company, the ambulance billing company, Ms. Dana Evans, can you tell me how you fit into the process? Yes, sir. Um, so with ambulance medical billing, um, once the ambulance has been dispatched, like Courtney said, and the services provided to your, your, your community and your patients, the bill will then be transferred or the actual medical record will be transferred over here to ambulance medical billing. And we have certified uh, coders who pick the bill up. They code the, the run to the appropriate service level um, mileage and modifiers, uh, also with the medical condition of the patient. We then send it over to our billing department, which our billing department will pick it up. Uh, they will do they will do a scrub through the patient demographics, make sure we have all the correct information, full name information on the patient. We will run eligibility checks on insurance information that is given to us to make sure that patient is eligible for that, that particular payer. We've also established a right relationship with your hospital uh, there so that if the provider's out in the field, it's an emergency situation or the patient is um, unconscious that we can work with your hospital to obtain additional information in regards to that patient demographics and um, uh, insurance information. Once we have the bill ready to go out to the payer, we will submit those claims for you. Um, the claims go out to the insurance carriers. Insurance carriers will process those claims. They will do one of three things or one of two things. They will send us a, a uh, insurance payment back and we will process all those payments for you. If there's anything left over, we'll in drop, start dropping statements out to the patients for their portion of it. If the insurance company happens to deny the claim, we have a denial team that will work those denials, get whatever additional information the insurance company is requesting, and then refile that claim um, out. Once the uh, claim's been adjudicated by insurance and we're billing the patients, we send three statement notifications. Um, the final statement being a third and final notice um, at that point in time, if the patient does not call in and set up a budget plan with us or pay the balance in full, then those accounts are referred on over to your collection agency there in uh, Macon. We do work with patients to um, get them on a payment plan. We offer electronic payments uh, through credit cards and ACH check transfers. Um, they can obviously send in a payment through the mail if they like, or if sometimes they do happen to show up down at the administration offices to pay, um, those monies can be transferred up to us and we'll post that as you deposit. Um, from there, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, we take it all the way from the point of providing the service until the claims are completely adjudicated. Okay, we, we mentioned earlier that uh, our, our transportation fees are very uh, good compared to other uh, providers. Uh, that's something that our Board of Commissioners make sure we take care of our citizens by offering uh, lower fees. Can you mm -hmm. speak to that right quick on private pay and Medicare, just quickly? So 
the tire mix in your community is about 35% <clears throat> Medicare patients, <clears throat> excuse me, and then another 30% are true self-pay, meaning those patients don't have any insurance. Um, you have a small Medicaid por portion in the community of about 15%. Um, Blue Cross runs around 5%, and then the commercial insurance is the, is, the, is the remainder of that. So the biggest portion of your payments that from the claims that are being filed out for you are coming either from Medicare-aged patients or mm -hmm. from um, non-insured. Your current average charge per run is about $690. And out of that $690, after, after your um, contractual adjustments, any bad debt, we're collecting around $270, $270 per run. So um, that's pretty good considering your payer mix. Um, with the high rate of private pay that you have, um, that's where we see that, that lesser amount on the, on the revenue per run. Um, that's one of the reasons we established that relationship with the hospital so that um, because they are there in your community and we can, with that communication back and forth, we can gain insurance information and patient demographic insurance information from actually what they're billing the patient. So that does help us out a lot. Okay. And last thing, uh, Michelle Mahaney, let us know how this benefit the organization and how does it benefit the citizens? in terms of uh, what we collect and cost and service? Sure. Um, the benefits to the citizens is that we provide them with the emergency medical services that they need um, in a timely fashion in a professional matting, uh, excuse me, in a professional manning matter as well. And uh, those revenues that um, do come in from the ambulance company are a portion of our budget. Um, the fire department is funded by a couple of different avenues, and uh, one of which is those EMS revenues, which that amount that they collect, basically, it covers almost our operational budget, um, aside from salaries and benefits. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair and Board of Commissioners, we do have uh, some documents with, with statistics if you need them. Uh, Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Okay, office. thank you so much. Uh, Chief Jolivet, and thank you so much for uh, firing and EMS committee this morning coming forward, providing some information to our board. Uh, certainly, uh, Ms. Evans, I know we are utilizing the IC9, uh, uh, I'm sorry, not nine, but IC10, which is the international uh, classification of disease. Uh, so we moved from the nine to the 10. So is that correct? Is that what you're utilizing now? Yes. In that class classification? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, I heard you mention coding, so I just wanted to make sure that we were using the latest and greatest uh, uh, model. Um, Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions for our for fire chief? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Okay, Commissioner Robinson. Yeah, I know Madam McCarthy may come behind me technically, so I'll, I'll keep it broad. Um, it, this is not my swim lane. All right, so um, uh, uh, the, the last speaker uh, was addressing what I was had an interest in, which is revenue um, and a source of revenue. And historically, and Director Hallman, if you're out there, I, I, you know I'm going to ask you that question, which is at one point the Board of Commissioners and the county as a whole had challenges in uh, collecting this, uh, collecting money. Uh, uh, it was a sore spot for us, not in a bad way, but we were coming through the Great Recession. We realized that we didn't want to uh, uh, be debt collectors. Uh, on people who are um, tax collectors, it is what it is. Being debt collectors um, on outstanding obligations is something that we 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 realized that we, it, it was soft, it was out there. We did we weren't we didn't do a good job at it because it was a conflict for us in our minds, and so we started using um, third parties to come and get involved in that. So my, my what what is the recovery rate? So here's a, a general question: What's our recovery? So I understand you're collecting. Uh, we bill it so it's 100 percent. I bill out 100 dollars, I give back 100 dollars. What is the overall recovery rate? Um, somebody. Okay, I, I can answer that, but I'm going to let Dana help me out. Uh, roughly, when we when we first bill out, we're getting about 50% of what we bill back on, a, on an annual basis. And then when we, we, we after three months, and it, we don't have the, those funds come in, then we go to a collection agency, which uh, they collect about, they get 2.35% of everything they collect. 
and we do have those figures. So Dana, you want to speak to that right quick? Yes, as uh, she said, there is a 50% collection rate, but you have to keep in mind that there is a portion of that, what you bill out that has to be adjusted off because of Medicare and Medicaid. Um, you're only allowed to bill out a certain allowed amount on those. And then, of course, for the Medicaid side, there's nothing that you can bill out to the patient side. So what Medicare pay, or excuse me, what Medicaid pays is, is would be considered 100% collections and you would have to adjust the remainder off. Typically in Medicaid, you're looking at anywhere from, the states vary but um, anywhere from 15 to 20 percent of your charge is what gets paid by Medicaid. A lot, most Medicaid, most med state Medicaids are on the lower end of that. And then with Medicare, uh, the Medicare allowable is right around 35 percent of your charge amount. Um, from the start of our contract, we've been doing the billing for five years now. Uh, from the numbers that were given out in your proposal prior to AMB's doing the billing, you were collecting about 1.8 million on um, 9,900 runs a month, a year. Right now, we in 2020, which was one of we, I mean, considering most of the services that we bill for, your service did very well in 2020, um, but it was a slightly lower than 2019. Um, in 2020, we collected 2.6 million on roughly the same amount of runs. So we're looking at a 32% increase that AMB was able to get for you all in revenue. Okay. All right. That, that, that was sufficient enough. Director Hallman, can you remind me just real quickly if you're out there uh, as a supplement to this conversation, did, did we write off something? I know we didn't do anything with it, but did, how do we clean that up? Um, in other words, there was a historical aggregation of just stuff that was out there. We didn't know what to do with it. Can you remind me of that history, please? Uh, yes, sir. Several years ago, um, we discussed this in the uh, finance committee as well as with our auditors. And um, in regards to that, um, we decided that once a determination is made that an account is not collectible, that it should be you know, written off. The statute of limitations for Georgia is four years. Um, so at this point, uh, the debt could no longer be pursued by magistrate court. Um, so the finance committee recommendation that was brought before the board or discussed with the board was on an annual basis that the EMS reserve for uncollectible accounts uh, be reduced to only include accounts that were less than four years old. Um, and so what we've been doing is doing this adjustment every year when we, uh, it's one of the last adjustments we do when we close the books, kind of like tax, uh, the uh, property taxes, we have to wait full 60 days. Uh, but we do, um, in our adjustment allow for allowance for uncollectibles every year. And so we apply this four year, uh, window, uh, to those uncollectibles. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. And you obviously were instrumental in helping shape that, that policy. So th thank you, Director Hallman. I'm good. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Um, Chief, I'm good for that. I've got to yield the floor back to my colleagues. But they may want to weigh in. Madam Chair, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Robinson. Any other questions for Chief Joliet that before we move on? Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Evans and uh, Ms. Mahaney and also Ms. Eubanks. We're going to move on. Uh, Chief, I have the next item. Or, or did I hear anyone for? Okay. I'm going to move on to tab number 10, authorization to renew an agreement with Southern Credit Bureau, DBA Credits, uh, Creditors Bureau Association for Collection and on Emergency Medical Services Invoices and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final review. Chief Jolivet. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is just an extension to what we have in place with our billing. Uh, once we do the billing process after three months, uh, then we turn, we, uncollected funds, we turn it over to uh, Southern Credit Bureau using the ambulance billing procedures. And uh, anything that's collected, we get, uh, they get about 2.35% of what's collected. And uh, we do have oversight of this through our ambulance billing uh, process. Uh, Ms. Evans, you want to say a couple things about that right quick? 
Ms. Dana Evans. Okay, sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so we do um, place with um, the Southern Credit Bureau Creditors uh, Agency. Um, we do an auto place each month that um, that debt figure is listed each month on the um, financial summaries. And again, that is after we have billed the patient three statements, uh, they've made no attempt to pay or no attempt to set up a budget plan. And then we automatically send those over to the collection agency in their format for them to collect on. Now at any point that um, a patient does continue to send a payment here, and that does happen sometimes, they'll pick up an old statement or whatever, they'll send that payment in. We do go ahead and post that, track those, and report those back to the collection agency. And then on a monthly basis, the collection agency will report any payments that they've collected back to us, and we track those just to make sure that we have an accurate collection balance for those patients. And the last thing is, uh, Ms. Evans, uh, do we have a system in place that will allow us to treat our uh, citizens with courtesy as we try to collect those funds? Absolutely. Or survey Yes, um, we have a, a full department that is dedicated to helping folks with their their um, questions in regards to their bills, our patient services line. They can call direct in there. Um, they will answer any questions. They will work with the patient, again, like I said, to make payment arrangements and, and make those payments convenient for them however they can make them if they want to do a credit card reoccurring payment if they want to do an electronic chance check transfer, or if they just prefer to mail those in here, the team will work with them and um, let them know. Um, they also work with your Medicare citizens because we know sometimes they have a hard time understanding their EOBs. So those folks on those lines are very well versed on what Medicare does and how they can explain that to your patients on their end to help them understand their billing. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Evans, for yield the floor. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Commissioner yes, Robinson, I know you still have the floor. Okay. Commissioner Robinson, I believe you had it, but. Okay. No, ma'am, I yield. We're good. You yield. Okay, thank you. To uh, Commissioner Carton, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Chief Jolivet, good morning. Good morning. Uh, my, my question to you, and you may not know this, so uh, but I, I do need to ask it. How long have we been with um, the Southern um, Credit Bureau? And my second question is the, um, the Credit Bureau, is it a subsidiary of the billing service that we're using now? So do they work in tandem because they are, uh, you know, a part of each other? Okay, great question, Commissioner. Uh, Ms. Evans, can you help me out with this, please? Yes, um, actually the collection agency that you, we, our parent company is a credit bureau, but not the collection agency that you all utilize to um, uh, send your bad debt to. The uh, agency that you use is Southern Credit Bureau in Macon. <laughs> our, our company is actually Credit Bureau Systems in Kentucky. So okay. it is two different entities, but we do work with that collection agency um, to report back and forth. Okay. Are you happy with working with them? Is it an easy thing? Does it help our constituents? Do you believe that this is a good working relationship? Um, between us and um, the collection agency, yes. Um, we have not gotten any complaints from any patients as far as that goes when they call in, but our working relationship and transferring information back and forth has been great. Wonderful. And Chief Jolivet, do you happen to know, or uh, Ms. Eubanks happens to know how long we have been with the Southern Credit? Will this be our second, you know, third, fourth engagement with them? Okay, uh, go ahead, Ms. Ms. Eubanks. I believe um, it's been the whole five years we've been with A and B. We've also utilized that collection agency also. Okay. And so this will now go into procurement. This I'm putting on my procurement hat, although that's not my committee. Uh, I, I would just say that maybe moving forward after this, we need to look at, um, are we getting, um, you know, is, is this a situation or a contract that we want to continue? Do we want to bid it out? Do we want to see who's out there and possibly bring, you know, bring in um, other entities that we could possibly do business with? Yeah. 
we actually have it on the agenda for our March fire EMS committee to okay. start looking at the process again for us since it's been the five years. Oh, well, you guys are ahead of me. Wonderful. Great. <laughs> thank you so much. Those are my questions. Thank you, Chief Jolivet. And Chief Jolivet, I just have to say, thank you for doing what you just did. I mean, you had everybody there so that the questions we as Board of Commissioners would ask, you you had everybody there so that we could get the answers and so that the, the, uh, the constituents could get the answers as well. So I just want to say kudos. Thank you for coming in and, and being about the business. I love it. I yield my thank chair. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, if there's no other questions or comments there from the board, we're going to uh, okay. okay, Commissioner Mitchell, I hear you. I okay. hear you so, coming. Right, okay, thank you very much. Chief uh, Jolivet, uh, I, I appreciate and, uh, and I concur with uh, Commissioner Carson about definitely having your team on board and having everybody here because you know we, we toss out a lot of questions. There's a lot of Q&A, so thank you for doing that much and doing your due diligence and having those that, because we don't expect you to know all the answers. I mean, I know you have them all. You're like me. You know, I, I know all the answers, but, you know, I have a team of folks who really know the answers. So thank you again for that. But my question, though, and it may be for the ladies, uh, and, and maybe you can, is that two point, uh, whatever that percentage, that's, is that an add on uh, pass through to those that uh, when we go out and collect, or is that's a portion of that money is being taken off of what we, what they're owed. I mean, help me understand that whole process. So I don't know if that's something that you can ask, I mean, answer, or is it that uh, your team could answer that question for me? Okay, uh, Ms. Eubanks, when okay. we collected the funds we received uh, in 2020, where were the, what, that, what, what was that amount from that uh, third party? From our collection agency? Yeah. Yes. And what I'm getting at, though, Mr. Okay. Banks, I'm, I'm trying to get at, do we add on that? Let's say these guys owe $500 for being picked up by an ambulance services. Do that 2% or whatever that percent when we go through collection, after they don't end up paying, go through collection, do that number become now $580, you know, or, or, or it backs off on the $500 that we were trying to collect that we pass it on to a collection agency. Is it a pass? Right. Okay. Help me in with that. Yeah. Sorry, um, that percentage does come out of what that the collection agency actually collects. Got it, got it. So, so it's a it's a reduction of the amount that we, we hopefully would have collected through these guys doing the doing their business correct. However, when we pass it on to a collection agency, they charge us a percentage to collect whatever they're trying to collect. And how correct. much how much do they normally collect on a percentage basis? They they collect 100 percent of all that we transfer over to these guys, or are they collecting roughly, you know, 40% or what, what is that magical percentage and or number, if you know? Um, I don't have that one. Uh, Dana Evans may have that one, a more specific number than what I do have. Got it. Dana, um, Dana? Yeah. Okay. I okay. do have what the, um, the billing agency, as the billing agency, we are collecting anywhere um, over the past five years, it's been 50 to 53% okay. of your net charges. Now, the collection agency themselves, that number will be much lower. Um, they usually collect anywhere from um, 3 to 5% uh, on patient balances that have been sent over to a collection agency. Got it, got it. And, and, and one of the, what's the acronym EOB? What is that? EOB? Yes. That is explanation of benefits. It's just that piece of paper you get in the mail from your insurance after they've processed your claim that tells you how much they paid, how much is your portion to pay, and the doctor or um, medical service that they paid that to. Great. Thank you. Because I was like, when you guys shooting out these acronyms, I'm like, I don't even know what you guys are talking about. You're talking over my head. So, but no, <laughs> I, I truly appreciate it. Okay. Well, outside of that, okay, well, well good stuff. And, and, and what is the ask? here in this conversation that we're having, or you guys just making us aware of the collection process? Um, I mean, what is the ask here, though, other than just giving the public and the commissioners just an update on, on the collection process? Or, I mean, Chief, what, what is the ask here? Yeah, yeah, yes. What it is is uh, we want to make sure that the community is aware of the process and also uh, looking at the oversight what we do for oversight, our enforcement, and also our accountability. So it's just more of a user-friendly system to let the community know that uh, we appreciate uh, having them as citizens, and we also appreciate the board for allowing us to 
uh, come in at some reasonable prices in terms of transport compared to other cities. I think Ms. Evans would, would tell you that uh, other agencies are, are uh, charging seven, eight, nine hundred dollars for transport, and we, we're keeping the cost down to six hundred. And then, of course, we're trying to make sure that we use those funds to take care of the citizens. Got That's it, what got it is, just awareness. Okay, okay. So, and I and I appreciate that, and 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 I appreciate you at least trying to make the citizens of Douglas County aware of this particular process and the system that 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 where we provide this type of uh, services to these guys and the cost and and what that process is. And I'm assuming accounting definitely loved the mere fact of this process because when we're talking to uh, Jennifer and others and and David, these guys want to know kind of what is that process on top of what's being collected or not being collected because that affects the budget as well. So uh, not that we, I don't know if they uh, uh, account for or calculate the budget based off of collection rate that you guys have. I, I hope not, but I, I just don't know kind of what they, what their process is. But knowing this, I think this only benefits them though. Okay. Well, I yield. Thank you again. And I yield Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell and uh, Ms. Evans and also Fire Chief. We'll, uh, I'll be hosting a, just an uh, update with you and Ms. Evans. We will have like a, a virtual meeting very soon so we can discuss uh, um, late postings related to Medicare and Medicaid billing. Had an opportunity to be the director of inpatient and outpatient billing for the University of Colorado Hospitals. So, uh, Ms. Evans, I know you're well aware you have a certain time to get those uh, charges in particularly for Medicare and Medicaid, and if not, they are considered late, and sometimes you just don't accrue. So I want to see if we can make sure we can just review our, our past history and see where we are today and see what we can do to capture and make sure that we fall within that five. It, when I, it was back in the day, probably 10 years ago, it was a five-day window to get those charges in. So we'll talk offline, okay, okay. Ms. Evans? Okay. All right, All right we're going to move. Oh, any other questions for us I can, so we can move to the next one? All right, we'll move to the next one. Uh, the next uh, tab is tab number 11, authorization to approve a contract with resource management consultants for the amount of $4,000 for the assistance with the firefighters grant application for the vehicle apparatus ladder truck replacement and turnout gear for new recruits as recommended by the Fire and EMS Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Chief Jolie Van again. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners. Uh, every penny matters in Douglas County as well as in the fire department. And uh, we had the opportunity to uh, work with a company uh, in, in terms of getting a grant for a ladder truck. Uh, ladder truck, the reason why we need a ladder truck is in 2019, we had a crash on uh, I-20 and uh, it, it totaled our ladder truck. And with insurance processes and everything came in, we was well under the amount we paid for that ladder truck. So uh, the fire safety committee members uh, was also asking in the past for alternate ways to to fund the ladder truck. And uh, we was fortunate to be able to get some information on uh, assistance to firefighter grant program. Uh, and uh, so we, we're trying to use that program in terms of grants. Uh, to replace the ladder truck, 1.5 million for the ladder truck and grants that we've, we're trying to get done, as well as some uh, replacement for our turnouts for our, our, well, actually do turnouts for our new recruits we have in training now, which average about $79,000. So a $4,000 investment is, uh, it'll go a long way. And hopefully if we get the, uh, the grant, we can save those coffers of splosh and we can use those in other areas of the, of the departments and all. So the community benefit, it helps by improving our ISO rating, our public protection classification. And like I said earlier, it helps on uh, uh, saving splash dollars so we can provide uh, other areas with uh, splash opportunities. Okay. Any so questions from the board? Any questions yes. from the board? Okay. Vice Chairman Robinson, and I know you're speaking, and also I'm going to ask you if you could just keep driving the meeting for me. I need to step away, okay? You have the floor, Commissioner Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, Chief, real quickly, so um, how many fire trucks have we replaced um, associated with this loss, do you know? Uh, I have uh, Deputy Chief Zachmeyer. Are you on the line? Yes, sir. 
help me with that question. I know we have uh, a, a engine coming in and also ambulance, but speak to the history of the splosh in terms of fire trucks and ladder trucks. I'm looking right now, see if it, I think we've had a, we've played with this particular splod, we've replaced four fire trucks and either four or five ambulances with the splosh money. Okay. So four and four, and what is the total fleet? We have 10 uh, engines in service. Uh, we have four spares. We have seven ambulances with four more spare ambulances. Two, light, or two lighter trucks, no spare, because we're using our spare to cover for the truck that's been involved in the accident, a heavy rescue, and staff vehicles. So, so the... Th thank you, Deputy Chief. So these are replacement vehicle that we should take. That's my, my, we got feedback. I'll put y'all sales on. Thank you. Um, I'm still getting feedback. Can you guys put your um, microphones on mute if you're not on the call? Thank you. All right. So to that point, so Chief put the question for you. So we're replacing this vehicle. Um, it's um, uh, the salvage value didn't give us enough for it, so we're looking for this grant writer to come in and help us. Is this a guaranteed grant? Uh, is it a competitive grant? What is this? Uh, it's competitive. Uh, the government gives X number of dollars, make them available X number of dollars to fire departments across the United States. And yep. uh, so it's a very competitive grant. But uh, at this point, we we're, we're, uh, have some good we set up real right for this grant because we're using a reserve truck, ladder truck, and uh, we do have a lot of issues that have happened to this reserve truck over the years. And so we are in a good position uh, to create some competitiveness for that ladder, new ladder truck. Okay. All right. So it's, um, have we ever used this in Douglas County? Is this the first time we ever sought this, this grant in Douglas County? Did you bring this to the table? Is this something that we've always historically gone after? We just weren't successful. Uh, we haven't used, uh, to my knowledge, a vehicle grant. Uh, Chief Zachmeyer might can speak to it, but this is something new that that uh, it was time sensitive and it was something that we wanted to get in uh, on the table. That way we wouldn't have to uh, just automatically turn the splotch for, for a $1.5 million price tag. So it was something that was uh, available and we want to take advantage of it right away and uh, I think we was a successful. I know we were successful in uh, in uh, getting all the documents and everything together to, to put in for it. So it's something that we want to take advantage of. And uh, I mean, with our major thoroughfare coming through here, we we need that uh, truck for ISO and other other areas. Okay. No, that's sufficient. I'm going to yield as the commissioner of District Two to my peers. The floor has been yielded to me. Any further questions on this business item? Yes. None. Oh, yes. Commissioner Mitchell, you have the floor. Just yes, one. My apologies. Okay. So, so Chief, so you, you brought this grant to the table. This is a new grant, I mean, that you kind of seeked out as you came aboard, or is it like like uh, Vice Chairman Robinson stated earlier, something that we've been kind of doing throughout Douglas County history? Uh, Thank you, Commissioner. Yeah, this, it's uh, uh, something I brought to the table. Uh, I am a peer reviewer for the uh, AFG grant program, and mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've read many of grants and uh, looked at many of opportunity, and, and Douglas County was right for this grant. Uh, we met all the everything we needed. It was just time sensitive, and uh, we were just trying to get it pushed through so we can make sure we can uh, be competitive and have a chance at, at those uh, 1.5 million funding and then with the new recruits that we started, uh, rather than write a check for $79,000 out of Splosh, uh, we were able to apply for assistance as well with AFG. Yeah. And uh, so we're hoping that we get it. And Chief, is there, is there a match to this particular grant that, that, that we have to look at as, as to our coffer, or is it strictly all grant funded 100%? Yes, sir. There's a match. Uh, it, it normally runs between 10 15 percent and uh we did we looked into our budget and uh, we was able to find uh matching funds and make it a budget neutral situation so it was it was kind of everything lined up just right for us and we hoping and praying that we get that grant so we can help those uh, help the citizens with splash dollars somewhere else 
So, so, so you you actually have within your budget currently a, a ten or fifteen percent possible match if you get the one point five. If I'm hearing you correctly. Yes, sir. We received funds from the insurance company, uh, which was around right under three hundred thousand dollars. So that put us in line to have matching funds to take care of this uh, grant if we get it. And did you? And I, and I know it's probably a redundant question, but you you actually wrote the grant, or did who? who um, go ahead. We assist, we assisted uh, the grant writer, um, and uh, was it our grant writer though, Chief, or was it another grant writer from Guam? Uh, it's uh, the grant writer with the company uh, that we're talking about. Uh, Resource management consultants, and uh, I, I've sit, uh, I've been around that that particular company, and uh, they they're pretty good at what they do. Uh, so it was an opportunity to to get a a good qualified grant writer in to help us out, and uh, and also they work with our grant, they work with our departments to uh, get good data, because that's what's in that's that's what's, what we have to deal with when we do grants is have good data run data, uh, equipment data, problems, that kind of thing. So we was able to work with our team internal and also with the uh, county uh, personnel to help us out with it. Yeah, but, but Chief, were you aware that we had a grant writer on, on, on board at the county? Did you know that or were you not aware uh, of that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I was aware. And uh, we actually uh, coordinated some with our, our county grant writer. And uh, yeah, I was aware of that as well. So, so you did. Uh, attempt to use our current grant writer versus I don't know what this re resulting management company charged to do the writing of that grant. Well, at the time, uh, by me being new to the county, um, I didn't we didn't I didn't really uh, seek out our grant writer per se because I didn't really know exactly what they were actually experiencing writing grants for AFG, uh, but we still coordinated with them and. Uh, I think it was a win-win situation for us, and with the time sensitive, the grant was uh, it's going to be due real soon, so we, had, we didn't have much time to act on it. But in the future, we're going to make sure that we use what we have in-house, 100%, uh, to make sure that we uh, incur, you know, make sure we take care of good savings for the for the citizens of uh, Douglas County. Absolutely, and that's why I was actually saying that is because of the mere fact of um, I don't know what this company charged. You know to write this grant but i'm assuming there were there definitely is a fee or am i correct in making that statement correct yes sir they charged us uh four thousand uh, dollars it was five thousand altogether but they gave us a thousand dollar discount and uh uh generally we, they wrote two grants for us but they did the ladder truck uh which was about two thousand and of course they did the uh, turnouts for two thousand so uh like I said earlier, uh, we want to make sure we we uh, be cost savings when we come to writing grants and dealing mm -hmm. with the community. Oh, it makes sense. I'm not I'm not you know harping about you know yes, costs. I just just want to make sure that you are aware that yes, we do have uh, a grant writer in house that should be actually you know helping with or assisting with this whole process. Or matter of fact, should be actually she should be actually finding these grants for you. Yes, sir. Assisting you through the whole process. So, okay. All righty, uh, Chief, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you again. And I'm going to yield back the floor to Vice Chairman Robinson. And oh, I'm assuming you're going to go back to Madam Chair, though, Vice Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Mitchell, are you complete? I am done. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Madam Chair, are you back? I'm back. All right, yes. Madam Chair, I yield the floor Thank back to you as Chair. All right. Thank you so much, Vice Chairman. All right. Uh, there are no other questions on this particular item that we just discussed. We're going to move on to tab number 12, which is authorization to accept a bid from Prime Foundation LLC in the amount of $794,000 for construction of a metal building at the fire department training complex utilizing 2002 SPLOST, SPLOST funds. Um, 600, in a total of $676,000 and 2016 SPLOS funds in the amount of $125,000 as recommended by the Fire and EMS Committee and authorize the Chairman to sign all related documents. Chief Jolivet, you have the floor again. Thank you, Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the former Fire and EMS Committee members for working diligently 
finding cost saving solutions uh, to mitigate the need for construction of medical building, uh, a metal building, I'm sorry. Uh, we tasked Chief Zachmeyer with answering a few questions for us as long as, as, as well as giving us the explanation. Uh, Chief Zachmeyer, are you there? Yes, sir, I am. Okay, can you speak to this? So this, this uh, like I said, we uh, had put this out for bid a couple of times. Um, we've, uh, to try to get the lowest price we could get. Um, the company that uh, qualified and, and is low bid uh, is, is the group that we're talking about here. Um, the building's purpose is to house all of our um, equipment, reserve equipment. Right now we have, I, I mentioned a few minutes ago, we have four reserve engines and ambulances. Um, we have those either in a station, in a fire station now, taking up room in their bay that they work in every day or sitting outside in the weather. Um, this building would allow us to centralize all of our equipment, get it under a roof, get it in a heated area, you know, with fire trucks and with water in them, you know, and, and the cold outside, that doesn't uh, always work out well um, with the diesel motors also. Um, so it's, it's a way for us to, to get all of our stuff centrally located get it in out of the weather. Uh, the maintenance uh, should lessen because they're not sitting outside. Um, and it's, it's a benefit to us and the citizens of the county. Okay. And also, 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 like Chief was saying, saying, and Chief Chief was saying, saying uh, our citizens benefit, benefit by, by not, not increasing cost. Sure. Sure. Chief, you're sure. echoing a second. Will everyone just uh, please turn your mics off? So Chief, you, could, you have the floor again. All right, thank you. Uh, like I said, the, the main main thing is citizens would benefit us not having to incur uh, additional maintenance costs uh, in terms of our vehicles. And uh, with all that said, I'd like to yield the floor back to you, Madam Chair. Okay. Any questions from, from the board regarding this tab? Okay. Sounds good. We'll move on to the next tab. And we're not going to move to tab number 13, uh, Fire Chief. We're going to we will reserve that and come back. It needs to come before the uh, the committee. And this is one that I don't recall us discussing. Is that tab number 13, Chief? I just want to verify with you. Yes, ma'am, tab number 13. Okay. okay, we're going to move on to tab number 14. Board. Yes, yes. Uh, Commissioner Robinson. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, yes. Now you can hear me? Yes, I can. All right, very good. All right, real quick. So. Director Holman, I got, I got, I, I just heard something. So we're using 2002 SPLOS dollars, $600,000. Director Holman, help me please. Um, why is that outstanding? And I, I know why, but just, just for the record. So where was that sitting? That is uh, sitting in a separate SPLOS fund. Uh, we actually have still two remaining projects from the 20. 02, 2002 SPLOS that are active. One is the fire department's training facility, and the other one is an intersection improvement um, on the DOT side. So cash is in the bank, sitting in a separate account um, as required, um, and those are the only two active projects that are remaining in the 2002 SPLOS. We, we did, I'm, I'm going somewhere, we did extend money from the 2002 to finish um, some of Boundary Waters fields, correct? The football field or soccer field? Do you remember? I can't remember off the top of my head, but I can look it up and see. But yeah, I, I do know that there there were some you know some projects or some funding that we were shifting around. But then now that was one of the things that um, I had Michelle uh, double back with both Miguel and uh, Chief Spencer at the time to say, okay, you each have one project. Um, here's the budget for that project and here's, you know, and here's what you've spent, if there's been any money spent and here's what you have remaining. So in our system, we balance the cash with those two projects only. Okay. So that, that was, that was specifically for, uh, it was for fire, not public safety, correct? It was correct. The 2002 spots was a general, uh, it wasn't a, a single source, single item though, but that was for that area. Uh, fire, um, that was the remaining project for them. Is that correct? Or was that it is neutral? correct. All right. Okay. All right. Director Holman, you're good on that one for right now. Thank okay. you. Uh, and, and, and and Gary, I know the answer. Gary Dukes, I know the answer um, that we did um, 
uh, take care of some fields. But th this is my point, is we got money from 20 years ago that we have not used. Great. Thank you, Chief. We appreciate you, Zach. I pre pre appreciate you. I'm making a point. Well, we sp spent that money on that jail pretty fast. Uh-huh. But we weren't, we weren't maintaining. We didn't maintain the parks. We weren't replacing equipment. It's about priorities. Right? And, and, and again, yes, citizens, we're sitting on two, three million dollars that we had spent from 20 years ago. And here we are, we're just now just, it, it's like, you know, again, I, uh, I, I'll, I'll acknowledge the fact that, you know, when I came on board, we realized that in 09, they're, 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 they're pushing a jail splash, but it's like you hadn't finished what you got. Right? And it was like, well, what about the citizens? And so we're starting back over here, and I, I'm making a point. Everything seems to be so concentrated, but I appreciate uh, the diligence that Chief Chief did. It's some historical. Welcome to the party. But there, there, there's something here that speaks to guys. Pay attention. We, we now know the citizens like, okay, well, this is why we're in a situation we are. And we can't make it all back up in one moment, but I'm, I'm making the point. Be, 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 be diligent. Be thoughtful um, about the tax dollars that we do have. Let's 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 do right, right? It's not always about the spend. It's like, well, what did you do with the money you had before? And it's truly being accountable. And it's just again, this is only because we as commissioners ask. It just sits there, right? Nobody's saying anything. No one's saying anything. So if if staff's not saying anything and the commissioners not saying anything. And the citizens, all we're doing is the system is taking money from the citizens, and it's just amassing. That's not right. All right, so it, I think what we're saying, we want to go to another level. Um, and so uh, we, we thank you for going, you guys even identifying this. It's okay. In fact, you went back and we, you were able to leverage that into today. Thank you. We appreciate that, Chief. Ma'am Chair, I just had to make that statement because I'm like, did y'all know what they just said? That was money from 2002. Are we talking about doing another splash? You ain't spent one two terms ago? Two, two, two splash ago? Okay, I think you get my point. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. We're good. <laughs> okay, any other comments for it before I move to tab number 14? And clerk, please make a note to remove uh, tab number 13. I don't want it to flow into the consent agenda tomorrow. We're gonna move to tab uh, number 14, authorization to utilize a splashed funds, uh, wait a minute, authorization to utilize SPLOST funds to purchase a SBA refill station for the amount of $33,711.39 to be utilized at the fire department training com complex as recommended by the fire and EMS committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Chief Jolivet, you have the floor again. You, your microphone is on, Chief. I mean, off. Yeah, there you go. Turn it on. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Commissioners. Uh, the SCBA refilling station that we're trying to purchase is uh, something that will help us with our training. Uh, SCBA stands for self-contained breathing apparatus. Uh, we're going to be really utilizing our training facility in the near future, and uh, we're going to be cycling uh, engine companies in and out, and to save time and getting them back in service, uh, we're going to be we're going to need to refill the uh, SCBAs and put them back on the truck so we'll be able to use for service. Uh, Chief Zeichmeyer, uh, you want to take over here and explain what's going on with the SCBA refilling station, the need for it, and how it's going to benefit the community? Yeah, I'd like to echo the, with the Chief. Um, this is what we use to fill our air bottles. Uh, we have the capability to fill them now in house, but we've got one piece of equipment that does it. So not only would this uh, help us at our training center, but it'll be a secondary means of filling these bottles. If, if our uh, air and light truck, the SCVA truck needed service, or if it went down, we would have a secondary means of, of filling our bottles. Um, okay, Chief. I think it froze. Okay. Did you get it? I'm sorry, did you get it? Yes. It, the, the benefit, like I said, to, to our department and the citizens of the county was 
to have secondary means of filling the bottles. If, if we were not capable, um, we have uh, partnerships with other counties that we could get them filled, but it would take a, a, a good length of time to transport them to another county, get them filled and bring them back. So the big thing, like the chief said, it's, it's, a, it's a way to fill these bottles. It'll help us in our training. We don't have to pull that truck to the training center anymore. We'll have a way to fill it there. And in case the truck does go down, we have a secondary means of filling the bottles. And the air and light truck is currently stored at Lithia Springs. Uh, Station Seven on uh, um, on Veterans Memorial there near uh, the old Greystone Power. Excellent, Madam Chair. We yield the floor. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Deputy Chief and Chief. Uh, any questions from the board? All right, thank you so much. Well, We're going to move on. Just one any? Just one okay, and, and, and okay, I Commissioner just... Mitchell. There, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, uh, Chief. If you would just speak to, I know this is off topic. It, it just still dealing in the fire and EMS. So, could you speak to the fact of we had a couple of calls about, and I think I passed this call on to you about fire stations. Don't get the number on the north side there on uh, Dallas that was supposedly closed. Or can you kind of speak to the general public about that not being closed and what were what was the take on that and kind of how did they even come about though, if you would please. Yes, sir. Uh, due to COVID and uh, all the new things that are going on now with the pandemic, most of our stations uh, appear to be closed, but they're not. Uh, this particular station was not closed. And uh, what we're going to do as an effort to ensure the public that we're not closed is we're going to find ways to interact more with them uh, using the social distancing, wearing our mask, and uh, that type of thing, but it, it was not closed. I did talk to uh, uh, Commissioner, Council. Commissioner, Council. yes, Council. Yes. Yes. I did talk to her and reassure her that the station wasn't closed. Uh, I did double check with all our personnel and uh, everybody was happy with it, but we're gonna be more visible uh, as the months and uh, years come to come, uh, but it, it was not closed and, and uh, we, we thank them for calling us and we, got on it right away and got right back to them. That's the main thing. We want to get right back to our citizens when, and also our councilmen when they have issues of concern. So uh, it was station seven in question, but it was not closed at the time. And I just want to tell you thank you because I think you did an excellent job of getting back to these guys and getting back to the community with the notion of it is not closed. So I appreciate that. But I, I just want to kind of just for the record and let people know that uh, no stations are closed. That, that That's unacceptable and that um, this one here particular wasn't closed, but I don't know how that notion got out that it was closed, but yes. I'm glad you cleared it up really quickly. And thank you again for that. And uh, with that being said, uh, thank you again, Chief and Madam Chair, I yield. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, if there are no other questions uh, regarding this particular topic, board uh, members, members, I'm gonna move on to tab number 15. At your pleasure. Tab number 15. Authorization to utilize SPLOS funds to purchase equipment, laptops, cameras, and speakers needed to continue virtual meetings and mandatory online training in the amount of $15,043.40 as recommended by the Fire and EMS Committee and authorized the chairman to sign all related documents. Chief uh, Joe Vetch, the floor again. Thank you, Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners, citizens. Uh, this purchase, uh, will help us in terms of our preparation for our uh, ISO and also our pub protection classification. Uh, the equipment that we're looking at purchasing will assist us with meetings, uh, Microsoft team meetings and things where our personnel out in the field. Um, so it's, it's a big push to get this done. Uh, uh, Deputy Chief Zachmeyer did the research on it. Deputy Chief Zachmeyer, you wanna talk about your research on this project? Yes, sir. And, and like the chief said, we, this is going to help us, uh, huge help us with the, the ISO stuff, uh, getting our, our training in, uh, reporting on our trucks, our incident reporting, all these things. Our computers were all purchased before the pandemic, pre-pandemic. Um, the thought of needing a camera in a computer and the microphones, you know, hadn't, hadn't even registered with us yet. Um, so what we're doing is having to go back to each one of the fire stations and, and up upgrade those computers so that they have the microphones and, and those kind of things so we can continue with our meeting uh, our meetings as we do now we I think we're in the, probably the team's world from now on 
So even post pandemic, we'll still get to utilize this stuff. Uh, Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners, one thing we're also looking at is um, doing some virtual uh, public education for our schools and also our, our citizens. So we're going to need those to help with that as well. But we're looking at uh, being more visible and being more uh, public friendly. So this will help us out. OK, thank you, you so go. much. Uh, both uh, Chief and Deputy Chief. Any questions from the board? Madam Chair. Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Yeah, this one speaks to a broader, and this is this is somewhat um, to my peers. So we're, you know, right, we're in a telecommuting COVID, almost getting through the halfway through the pandemic, on the on the back nine of the pandemic, hopefully. And here we are, um, we're using SPLOS dollars to provide for infrastructure. Now we've got COVID money that should be used for infrastructure. It's, it's all relative, right? It's all one bucket of money, as I, I would say, at the end of the day. But I mean, I mean, this. And I appreciate it, Chief. We're just now getting around to this. See, ISO, whatever ISO had always been there. Got it. That makes us bring into alignment. Gotcha. But the pandemic was something that says that we we should have been already down this path and providing these guys with stuff that's out in the field that's active, that is our front line, that they don't have any equipment. They don't have what they need to stay plugged in. So how have y'all been doing this? And it just yeah. makes me, it was, you don't have to defend it. When I ask questions, you, it's, it's, you don't have to, um, it's more rhetorical because to my peers, like, really? Right, so I'm, I'm back to, okay, what is our plan and what is the priority? And you, you have limited dollars. And I, again, we appreciate it, Chief, you coming in like, look, OK, while y'all working this out, I, I got to get stuff done. I appreciate it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm just looking at, OK, what's SPAS, the most ideal source versus this. But I mean, I don't I don't have to lean one way or another, but it just makes me like. I'm still back to the, like, wait a minute, we're almost a year into this. And they ain't got no equipment out in the field. They can't plug in what they do is smoke signals. I mean, it, it, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm advocating, Chief. I mean, I'm, I'm supporting this, but I, I have to drive home a point of thoughtfulness for my peers, the guys. Okay, it's exposing some things is our point, right? We show up every two weeks. We get to ask questions. Okay, so what's going on? All right. Well, so we provide oversight to your oversight, Chief. So we're like, okay, what now? Right. And so we appreciate that. Um, 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 wow. I'm 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 in support of this, Madam Chair. Obviously, I, I'll yield to the fire EMS. It's just the proper source. I'm I'm okay for the the resolution that was passed for IT. But it's just like wow, guys, wow. So it's it's just something for me to think about. I'm not going to belabor this right now, Madam Chair. I may have come back with some later questions. Let me yield the floor. I just had to express that, like wow, these guys didn't have any equipment. And again, we're going on a year on what March 11th, 12th. You knocked this thing over, Madam Chair. You yes. you less than. <laughs> Thirty days later, right? Right? Right. Within within thirty days, ma'am Chair, when you knock this place over. We we sheltered. And they're just now getting this stuff. That that's all. It was just I had to drive home that like, okay, it's awareness. So I think we all get it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you so Madam much, Chair. Vice Chairman Robinson. Commissioner Carthen, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Uh to my colleague's point, uh this is probably more in line with COVID. And mm -hmm. I would say since we do have that bucket, you know, I don't want to usurp the fire EMS's committee authority, but I would just say if you guys would look at that and see if we could pull that out of the, the, the COVID resolution funds that we have set aside, because this does co, you know, it, it, it co-mirrors what we should be doing, right? This, this helps the fire, EM, the fire EMS 911, it helps them to communicate with the citizens because it's a pandemic. And so we want to make sure that we avail ourselves of all of the resources and the technology. So um, it would be my hope that the fire EMS committee would go back and possibly recommend this coming out of the COVID resolution funds. Okay, thank Madam you so Chair. much. Yes. Do, do, do you think so that the fire EMS can go I, back and look at that? I, I think it'd be perfect. And then the recommendation okay. at that point would be just me going in and just uh, transferring that money out of the uh, technology, which is a very good point. Uh, uh, Chief, we could move very quickly because those dollars are sitting there and ready to go. 
So uh, that that um, I will chat with you. So we're yep. going to remove this item, and we have one more that we may want to remove too that may uh, affect technology, and it's related to our CAD. It's fifteen thousand. So I believe uh, as we go, board of commissioners, there may be another item that I want to consider as well to move from uh, the uh, COVID funding. So, Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, Deputy Chief, we're gonna move, we're gonna move this uh, clerk. Please remove it, but we're gonna take care of it, Chiefs. After this meeting, I'll meet with you, and yes. then we'll take care of it. Okay, it'll Thank be you. done. All right, we're gonna move on to tab number 16, and I know this one may be one that I know we that hopefully our board would consider uh, taking out of the this authorization to utilize SPLOS funds for equipment, vest, and helmets needed to complete the ballistic equipment program in the amount of $31,026.90 as recommended by the Fire and EMS Committee um, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Chief, again, can you explain why we need these uh, additional vests yes, as we discussed in our committee? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair, well, Commissioners. Uh, Chief Zeitmeyer, please speak to the need of the uh, ballistic vest, what what made us decide to, to go this route? So this is something that we we had looked at uh, um, in the past. Uh, most all of the fire departments, local fire departments here in EMS services, already had these uh, vests and helmets. Um, we had a conversation with Madam Chair, got a lot of support from her. We began a program back in 2020 where we bought 25 sets. It didn't completely outfit everybody that's in the field. They were having to uh, share a vest uh, kind of deal. So we went back and looked and there were 30 more positions that we needed to cover. Uh, and this is the 30 that we need to have everybody that's on the fire truck or ambulance in the field in a vest and helmet. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, we yield the floor. Okay, thank you so much. Board of Commissioners, any questions regarding the helmets and the ballistic vest? Okay, sounds okay, good. Thank you. All right, Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on to tab number 17, authorization to utilize SPLOST funds to purchase upgrades for the CAT system in the amount of $15,434 as recommended by the Fire and EMS Committee and authorized the Chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, before I, I certainly uh, respond um, to this request. Certainly, I, if you could, Chief, just explain what the CAD system is used for, and it may be an opportunity to uh, certainly draw down from our COVID-19 funds as well as related to technology. But let's let's talk about it first before I go too fast. You have the floor, Chief. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the CAD system is a, a relatively new system that was upgraded recently, and uh, they're looking at other upgrades to the system in order for the fire department to be successful, uh, we, have to, we have to make some upgrades as well. Uh, to, this, to the exact specifics of it, uh, Chief Zachmeyer can tell us more about it. Uh, he actually been there and done the research. And Chief Zachmeyer, what, what's our uh, take on this? So the, 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 Q, the CAD system allows us to communicate with our dispatchers in the CAD system um, by computer. So a lot of things that you know can't be said over over the radio um, we do on this CAD system. It enables us to uh, get a call summary from our dispatcher. Uh, it's got our pre-fire plans of all of our buildings. Um, it gives us our call times, location maps. We can throw up a neighborhood on the computer and show exactly where the house is in the neighborhood. It uh, has a uh, hydrant layer on it where we can look at all the hydrants in a, in a subdivision that we're responding to and it, it'll tell us any hazards you know that, that we need to know um like i said our, our computers the cad system allows our computers in our physically in our trucks to communicate with the the, the 911 center uh the 911 center has gone to a new cad system and this is monies we need to actually update our stuff so that we can still communicate with them Madam Chair, we the floor. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Chief and Deputy Chief. Board of Commissioners, any questions regarding this item before I ask if we, you know, certainly your pleasure to move it to technology. Uh, Commissioner Robinson, Vice Chairman, you have the floor. Yeah, it, it, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you know, on, on this one now, I've got to go back to the $16 million tower that we just, <laughs> radio system, this, okay, so 
Um, and again, we just wanted to get the infrastructure in. I get it. But this seems to be related to that as it relates to SPLOS. It, and I, I'll yield to Commissioner Mitchell, obviously, on this one to say, but but, but this one's like, no, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, you know I mean, okay, I, I have no problem. I don't uh, not support the need to, um, uh, uh, I'm going to call it like an add-on uh, to leverage the use of th this big platform that we've built. Um, and so I, I, it goes commensurate. I mean, while you, I mean, it's sort of like buy the radios. You know, you got a tower, but buy the radios, buy the software, buy, I mean, sync it up, be holistic. And I, I appreciate that this is just sort of a fill in. Um, but I, I, I think this year is more appropriate uh, with SPLOS because it's tied, it's just an extension of money that had already been um, as part of a, a referendum by the public um, that, that Fire and EMS was uh, a major. Um, um, of importance and specifically that um, that tower to a certain extent as being an, an offlier. So I, I'm going to tie it to that and I'm trying to support this as is. So I'll give the floor yep. to my peers to sort of good. clarify what they're going to do with this, but I'm good. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much. Um, any other comments from our Board of Commissioners? And uh, I just want to make sure you weigh in and just say that you support this as, as is with the SPLOS, which is what this committee is proposing. Okay. I mm -hmm. yes, I, I I agree. This is still SPLAS related, so this this okay. item should, should stay as you guys uh, recommended it from the EMS and Fire Committee. Thank thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank Commissioner you. Mitchell, you have any uh, comment I, before? I, I concur. I concur. I mean, well stated by Vice Chairman Robinson and Commissioner Carson. Okay. Thank you so much. With that being said, uh, we're going to move on to our next item. And thank you so much, uh, Chief Jolivet. We had a run this morning, but great, great job, you and your team. And thank you so much, Deputy Chief Zach, Zach Meyer as well. All right, we're going to move on to tab number 18, authorization, uh, well, authorize a resolution to support an application to the Atlanta Regional Commission, ARC, for the Community Development Assistance Program, CDAP, and technical assistance with the Lithia Springs Small Area Study, and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Manager Ron Roberts. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners and everyone else. Hope everybody had a good Valentine's Day. Uh, so in your packet is, this morning is a, a resolution in support of exactly um, what uh, Madam Chair just outlined. It's a, the CDAP, the uh, Community Development Assistance Program. Uh, just as a refresher, uh, in 2018, we applied, the county applied for uh, CDAP, um, Community Development Assistance Program, to uh, update our Unified Development Code, which we got some assistance with that, and we're still working through um, finishing that up. We had uh, a series of um, of changes that came through uh, in December, as you may recall. The ask this morning is for um, us to move forward, staff to move forward with an application for the Lithia Springs Small Area Plan. Uh, our, my senior planner, Allison Duncan, has done a lot of legwork. Uh, we've had two calls with the citizens in that area, stakeholder groups that um, have come together, um, very active. Uh, on each call, it was somewhere between 20 and 35 people. Um, very excited uh, uh, community, um, and uh, we were also identified, she's also identified some parcels throughout the area. And so the 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 ask here is um, is, is the resolution support of this because what we want to do is 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 get some um, to move the, the needle even further. Um, the uh, CDAP program previously had a percentage match of 20%. Um, this 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 year they have made it a flat fee. Um, so it's a uh, it would be a three thousand dollar. Uh, would be the county's portion and, uh, uh, for the uh, study for them to help us to identify um, uh, best case scenarios, look around the region for other um, a small area like Lithia Springs and bring forward some recommendations for, for uh, future planning and uh, identify some activities for implementation in that area with that stakeholder group. There's an additional $500 flat fee for uh, training of the, the PNC board and the board of commissioners to help um, when once those studies are identified and put and put together, then they would that they would be brought forward and we could have those 
to uh, to look at and, and and really drill down on what we want to do in this area. The um, so the total ask financially for from would be a thirty five hundred dollar, but I have here not to exceed five thousand because that's the most that I have in my budget to uh, put towards this project. Um, and that's it. That's uh, so I'll open, open the questions and Allison's also on here with questions. But what I did want to add um, in these calls, we've actually had three of the planning and zoning uh, board members uh, participate. We've had um, um, uh, a couple of the uh, legislative aides participate. Uh, very excited about it. We've, we've also met with ARC staff. They're looking forward to this application. And um, yeah, so, so I'm open up to any questions that you have. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Manager Roberts. Uh, Board of Commissioners, any questions regarding this CDAP uh, application? Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, so um, thank you, Manager Roberts and, and Allison, you, if you want to uh, get prepared. So small area, so somebody give me some history. We've done small area, uh, Lifted Springs obviously covers primarily District 2, but obviously it overlays District 1. We did a small, so distinguish this study from the ones that we did regarding, um, you know, it's sort of the TAD, the, the, the corridor. I mean, there's a lot of studies going on right now, and not support studies, I get it, because you got to know where you're going. So, but clarify, distinguish what, the difference of what this is versus those prior two studies in Lithia Springs, because it all begins to blend together at some point. Sure. Allison, you want to take that one? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think that we are calling it a small area study because it's part of a larger effort um, that the planning staff is working on to introduce some character area work in the comprehensive plan. Um, and so we are looking at, at this area around Lithia Springs to primarily look at where the land use uh, patterns have and haven't worked out based on what's our, our, what is currently in our comprehensive plan. Um, we have a, a draft uh, plan that is going to be on the website this week in addition to all of the PowerPoint presentations and meeting summaries that we've already shared um, in regard to this project. Um, and just as a reminder, we're doing some larger work such as the corridor management plan along the South Douglas Scenic Byway um, that's also kind of all driving towards this same uh, project, which is to be ready to introduce some better character area planning and policy work for the update of the comprehensive plan, um, which we anticipate starting to think about in the next year. I got you. So, so somewhere in 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 um, in Lithia Springs, um, you're going to read. Uh, is that areas that have like are up for what blighted areas, uh, areas that need to be redeveloped? I mean, things that you said didn't work out. They're stagnant. I mean, what are you saying? What what does this do? Or or, or how? Do you, I mean, yeah. So uh, yes, sir. I, would, I would say all of the above. Um, I think you've hit the nail on the head with that. I think that this is a special area of Douglas County. Um, I understand that there was some citizen stakeholders that um, had approached uh, some of the commissioners and said, you know, since the area basically uh, unincorporated and went back into the county, um, they feel that they would like, you know, to, to have a conversation about kind of their vision. And looking at the land use plan, specifically in the comprehensive plan, um, we've talked through some areas where I think the vision that was put in place, quite frankly, many years ago, now maybe the land use hasn't transitioned to make that viable. So specifically, there was some um, commercial and commerce center designations that I think um, we probably should revisit. And that's one of the recommendations that we have put, um, you know, in our draft plan, which will be available later this week. Um, I think there's some potential larger connections to the to the surrounding community. Um, so as a part of this, we've identified kind of the historic Lithia Springs core, as well as kind of an area that we're just as a placeholder calling kind of the greater Lithia Springs um, community. And so I think examining those connections and where we can kind of tighten up our planning work and then translate that into kind of zoning and other policy work um, that we would use as we work with the planning and zoning board and board of commissioners on future zoning applications, grant applications, and things of that nature. All right. So I, that, that, thank you, Allison. That that was good. So you're looking at the historical Lithia Springs, right? A charter had once been out there where they were incorporated. They let it sit. So at least, Madam Chair, you won't have to worry about this Lithia Springs coming back as a city. So it sounds like that they're, you're now taking what their vision may have been that might have been dormant allison and you're bringing it forth and just revisiting things becoming more crystal clear is that what i'm hearing just yes sir and i would encourage uh everybody to take a look at our blog posting so we've been tracking this project through a blog on the douglas county website um, where we've tried to do our best to identify all of those historic patterns um mm -hmm. you know that have influenced what's basically on the ground today and why they have or have not worked as well together over time 
Uh, and to the point that Ron had made earlier about the application, uh, based on the feedback from the, the steering committee, what we're looking to do is to, to have some research done by the Atlantic Regional Commission and their partners to show us best practices from around the region of the types of things that we're proposing in the implementation plan that the community has asked to maybe see in their community. So that's things like branding and signage, uh, kind of better gateways, um, mm -hmm. maybe looking at how they can support a merchants association um, and, and things like that, you know, to say, well, what communities have done it well and how did they do it so that we have kind of a good playbook as we go forward um, for how we can introduce some of these elements into to Lithia Springs. All right. So let me now I'll yield the lesson. So it sounds like Lithia Springs specifically is like, but while we're, we're no longer a city, we're unincorporated, we still have a character area. We still remember it wasn't dissolved. We know it wasn't dissolved per se, it just it, it lapsed. So, but it sounds like the citizens, the stakeholders, they're still, um, I won't call it a township, but it still has its own character. And obviously Lithia Springs Senior Center, and I mean, Lithia Springs, I mean, people know Lithia Springs. So I, I get it. I, I like where you guys are, um, um, I appreciate the focus here. And I think it warrants it. I, I just need to hear, um, as long as the citizens are engaged in this, and this is just not an exercise of, um, you know, um, it, 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 the citizens are engaged, I'm, I'm fine. So with that being said, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm fine with that as is. Keep going. Let me let it, let it go. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Vice Chairman. Any other questions or comments from the board before, before I move to the next item? Thank you so much, Ron and Allison. Sure. We're going to move to tab number Okay, we're going to move on to tab number 19. Tab number 19 is authorization to write off uh, tax interest for Coal River land accounting the amount of $2,936.82. Tax Commissioner Baker, are you on the line? I am. How are you today? Everyone? Fine, and you? Mm -hmm. uh, this is you have the this is Go ahead. You have the floor. Mm -hmm. This is something I brought to you guys back in December where they were asking us to write off that $2,900. This is a company um, that we chased down for about four months trying to collect our money from them. They owed us uh, approximately $242,874, which they evaded us for about four months. When we went out there, they claimed they their business wasn't there. They had an office in Atlanta. We went up there, they evaded us in Atlanta, and finally we decided to put a sign in their yard that said we're going to do a tax sale on the property and lock them out on a Friday. Uh, and all of a sudden they called us, wanted to make arrangements to make the payment. We gave them till Friday, and uh, that Friday they came down and they did pay the $242,874. However, they still owe interest and penalties, which we roll that interest and penalties over. We got to remember they owe this for 2016, 2017, and 2018. On the 34,000, we rolled it over into the 2018 taxes so that they would still owe us money on 2018. On the 2018 bill, we sent them a letter that they needed to get that payment in which they did, but again, they shorted us. So they sent us a check for $31,390, shorting us, shorting us by that $2,936. They asked us to forgive that, which was interest. And I said, we couldn't forgive that. We needed that payment in. They asked that I bring it to the Board of Commissioners to ask you to forgive it. And so that's why it's before you now. Now, the one thing I want to say why I did not forgive it, that's too much for me to forgive, so I have to bring it before you guys. Although you gave me authority to forgive it, I don't think that we need to forgive that amount of money, and they asked me to bring it to the Board of Commissioners. I think once we start forgiving debt, we have to be consistent, and that's what I try to do in my office. If I'm consistent, then I have to do what I do for one, I have to do for everybody. So you got to remember, if you forgive that debt, then you're going to be bombarded with a number of individuals asking you to forgive that debt, too, because once you've done it for one, you have to do it for everybody. So I'm before you to see if you want to forgive that debt. Um, and I'll leave that decision to you guys. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Tax Commissioner Baker. 
for the commissioners, you have anything you want to just comment on? Certainly, this is something if we did uh, vote on, it would be weighed on in a different setting. Uh, any questions or comment from the board? Comments? Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Vice Chairman Robinson, then you have the floor. Yeah, okay. This, this is just in general, um, and I've got two parts. Um, tax incentive plan. Um, I know there's what, 15, 16 companies that are part of tax incentive plan that we have on the books specifically. Um, um, are they timely in payment? Um, one in general, Get, and you may not have the answer. I don't know the director Holman or David Corbin. I need to know that information. I want to know the status of, of everybody, all 15 of those companies in a tax incentive plan and how they paid, um, in 2020. That, that's to the side. It doesn't drive the current moment. All right. Um, as it relates to this, um, and, and I, I, I hear the tax commissioner. I understand his constitutionality. I understand policy. I understand checks and balances. I understand. Um, um, there are extenuating circumstances, but to your point, if you begin to have this, 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 the forgiveness, um, I guess, you know, how, how do we treat the average citizen? Right. I'm always, you know, um, corporations have a, a little bit more leverage than the average citizen. And so do we do we sit on them and we just we pull and we we make them pay. Right. And it's on the courthouse steps and I, I at least feel the people out there. Right. Or do we. Right. So it's, it's things that I mean, this is policy. I'm not getting it to. So if you ask me my position is just like, well, we're looking for good faith. I mean, I get you paid the principal um, and you just want to like, okay, I'm gonna pay this. I'm, I'm gonna give you a best effort payment, but you know, let this go. Well, do you do that the same way for my, my citizens that are in trouble who don't have revenues that they can drive, they have a job and they don't have the same I mean, I'm, I'm, I can separate the two. <clears throat> I can compartmentalize them. And so for me, for district two, I'd say, uh, where I'm at on this is that uh, I'm I'm not in support of the forgiveness on this one. Um, I don't have to go long on why. Uh, I don't think there's a right or wrong. I think everybody just takes a position. Um, but for me on this one, uh, I'll stand with you, Task Commissioner. Um, um, I understand uh, people can appeal up to a higher court, higher authority. So I, I preach we respect the process. That's why it's before us. Just so the, the public is asking if he had the authority. But people can. There's always an ap a, a appeal process, right? You can always appeal something up. So uh, thank you, um, um, Task Commissioner, for um, allowing us to sort of weigh in and honor the process. But for me, um, I'm with you, um, and so I'll leave it there. I yield the floor, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Any other questions or comments from the board regarding this matter? Tax Commissioner, I would ask uh, for this 2,936 dollars and 82 uh, cents um, taking the same position to not waive it. However, is there um, a, a process where you could codify a plan to uh, have this particular company uh, maybe make uh, arrangements, maybe for three payments divided in three months or something of that sort? I know you are a creative tax commissioner. Is that something you're willing to do? Oh, yeah. So we, we have a payment plan people can set up regular yes. citizens, corporation. So yeah, we have a payment plan that they can do. Okay, sounds good. Any other comments from the board? Yes, All right. Chair. Okay, okay. Madam uh, Chair. Commissioner Mitchell. Mm -hmm. No, I, I was just going to say uh, that, I mean, I see Ken looks like he's got some legal comments that I want to kind of hear from Ken. So Ken, if you'll kind of take, take a quick stab at this and then I'm going to comment after Ken. Go ahead, Ken. Y yes, sir. Uh, first of all, I think the commissioner, uh, tax commissioner, is co legally correct on this one. You know, the, the the problem that you run afoul, the reason why this didn't go through uh, the process that y'all laid out for the board of assessors weigh in and the tax commissioners weigh in, is because there is no error. Uh, this is not a case where the county or the government or the taxpayer made an error uh, and is seeking to redress an error, and as a result of that. Uh, I sh uh, I'm reminded of the gratuities clause that prohibits you from giving away tax funds to somebody for no basis. In fact, I will also remind you the, the period that the tax commissioner has described is non COVID era period. In other words, y'all gave some relief back because the state legislature gave y'all authority uh, to give some relief back 
during the initial crisis of the COVID era, which I think was March of 2020 through some date, this date is, does not include the period of time in which uh, they've requested relief. Essentially what they're doing is they're appealing to your emotional sense and not a legal sense in, I, in our estimation. And we would ask that you follow the guidance of the tax commissioner. He requested this be on because he'd like to put it to bed and we would too. Thank you, you so much. Sergeant Jack Hand. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. All right, thank you. Okay, so, uh, and I concur, though. I, I mean, I, I would just know that the tax commissioner has always been consistent with those who have either payment plans or pay their bills or collect as he's done. As he's done. So, I, I would concur with uh, the tax commissioner's thoughts and views on this one and, and take his lead on this. <clears throat> I, I think whether he institute a payment plan or not, it still should be his discretion, not our discretion, meaning the Board of Commissioners. So whether you go back, you know, from where I stand, whether you go back and make out a payment plan, whether it's one month, two months, 30 days, 60 days, or 90 days, be consistent with whatever that is that you do that is consistent with everybody, which I know that you are. I, I know I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, but be consistent whether they're a citizen, a non-citizen, or a, a, a commercial business of any sort. Just be consistent. But outside of that, I would I would definitely stand where you basically you, where you stand at in the whole process of this should be collected. He or she should pay their taxes and uh, be fair across the board. So I'll yield, yield with that. Thank you and thank you, Ken. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner yes, Mitchell, and so much, Attorney Bernard. Okay, I believe you have your marching orders, uh, Commissioner Baker, Tax Commissioner. You're, are you satisfied? I am very satisfied. And thank okay. you, Mr. Kim. Yeah, thank you, Tax Commissioner. Uh, Madam Chair, so it would be appropriate to vote on this tomorrow publicly so that we mm -hmm. can put it to rest. And if the taxpayer wants to exercise its appellate rights, it can move on. But I think uh, Tax Commissioner Baker would like a vote, so it's recorded in the yeah. minutes. And we will. Okay. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Attorney Bernard. All right. Well, we're going to move on to tab number 20. Thank you so much, Tax Commissioner. We're going to move on to tab number 20. Last but not least, authorization to approve a memorandum of agreement with Vision 21 Concepts, Inc. to provide emergency financial assistance to the citizens of Douglas County to be used for mortgage payments, rent payments, and utilities. Uh, Tiffany Stewart Stanley, our Director of External Affairs, you have the floor. Tiffany Stewart Stanley, are you here? I am, and I'm talking to myself, so I apologize. Good morning, okay. uh, Board of Commissioners. Uh, this memorandum of agreement is in connection to the $4.6 million that the Board of Commissioners allocated back in December for the purpose of providing emergency assistance to those affected by COVID the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, this funding um, that we are using for this memorandum of agreement with Visions 21 concept is part of the com community stability needs that was set aside and the total amount was $866,000. This memorandum of agreement that we are seeking permission to enter into is with Visions 21 Concepts, which is a local 501c3 organization here in Douglas County um, for the purposes of administering funds to provide emer emergency financial assistance in the form of mortgage rental and utility assistance. The total amount that um, that's in the memorandum of agreement should, should be $264,833. And I will have to get to, with legal to get this corrected because currently it says a different number. Um, mm. of, I'm sorry. One second. Of that amount, 8% will be used for administrative costs and those costs are $21,186.64. Visions 21, they will have to provide a monthly financial audit report to the Board of Commissioners to, so they can show where, where the funds are and what the funds are being used for. And they will also have to um, provide a financial report at the end of, the use, of using the funds. All of the funds must be expended by June 30th of 2021. 
So at this time, I will um, turn it back over to Chairman Jones for any questions. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Director Stanley. Board of Commissioners, we have any questions for uh, Director Stanley? Okay, all right. Thank you so much, uh, Director Stanley. We appreciate you. All right, Board of Commissioners, uh, we that concludes all our actual uh, tabs this morning, but I certainly will yield. I'm going to uh, speak with our attorney to see if we, there's a need to go into executive session. Attorney Bernard, do we need to go into executive session? Yes, Madam Chair, uh, you need it for real estate and litigation, and I will need James Worthington uh, for the first thing and Fred Perry for the second thing. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Attorney Bernard. Chair? What, mm -hmm. Can we add personnel yes. as well? Can we do all three yeah. if there are some um, outstanding personnel? So, great mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Attorney Bernard will add personnel as well. Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and, this, and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District 1. District two. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. Yeah, somebody is rustling paper, so it's kind of hard to hear you. Yeah. Okay. Um, District four is not here, and then uh, Chairman, yes, we have a four unanimous vote, and the motion carries. All right, uh, Board of Commissioners, you know how we do it. We sign off, and then of course, Lisa, uh, our clerk, would you please provide instructions? before we sign off. Yes, ma'am. Once you sign off, I will call everyone back into the executive session. Okay. okay. Thank you. And the citizens of Douglas County, the Board of Commissioners, we will return momentarily after our executive session. Thank you so much for your patience.